We're going to get started. Um, Mr. Diegman, can you please mute yourself? I see a few people are still not muted, and then we'll get started. Kathy, I believe the ones, I'll watch those. I believe they don't have microphones, which is why that's showing like that. Ah, okay. Um, All right. I'm going to call to order the Canandaigua Town Board meeting of February 15th, 2021. At this time, um, can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? It will be led by Town Board Member Jared Simpson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jared. Jean, could you please call the roll and um, could you please call the roll? Yes. Um, Councilman Gary Davis. Actually, I, he just sent me a text message. He's called in. I have to find his phone number in the list okay. here. So. All right. Very good. Thank you. Councilwoman Linda Dorzak. Present. Councilman Terry Fennelly. Present. Supervisor Kathy Menicott. Present. Councilman Jared Simpson. <clears throat> Present. All right, um, we have written communications that, oh, I'm sorry, Jean, can you please um, confirm that the meeting was properly advertised? Yes, um, the notice was sent to the Daily Messenger and out onto social media um, last Tuesday afternoon. Thank you. Um, all written communications are available for review as attached to the agenda, plus additional communications are on the town website as indicated in the town agenda. We've already gone over the um, birthdays for the month that was gone over last time. Um, at this time, we have our first privilege of the floor. Um, please remember to keep it to three minutes. Um, the rules are on our website, obviously, and for reasons that I should not have to go into, no profanity or other um, improper use of words. Be polite. And um, I know I have a few of you who would like to be heard. Um, Mr. Stachak, go ahead. I think you have to be unmuted. There you go. Hey, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Ryan Stachak, R-Y-A-N-S-T-A-Y-C-H-O-C-K. I live on Ketchum Road. Uh, thank you for the time. I just got three things I'd like to kind of review or bring up. Uh, that do not apply to the, uh, that anything that's on the agenda. So thanks. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Fuller and the Fuller family for uh, uh, and for all the goodness that they're bringing to our community with Bristol Mountain. Uh, I've been lucky to get, get down there with my family and my boys. Specifically, thanks for the opportunity to, to provide a good safe place for our kids to have a good winter break. Uh, we took the kids there today. And I looked around and I thought, what a great place and a good resource. So I wanted to thank him. But it underscored uh, a, a good business and how it is such a sustainable business, which brings into my second point. I just want to encourage the town board to, to, to really embrace sustainability. Uh, the three pillars of sustainability are economics, uh, the, looking at the fiscal aspects of things, certainly the environmental issues, and then also the cultural issues. And I think that Bristol Mountain kind of underscores that. Uh, when we look at sustainability, um, for example, I was talking to a friend of mine recently about the value of an open space program in the city of Fort Collins, where I lived for about 11 years when I was completing my undergraduate and my graduate work out at Colorado State. And we were talking about the open space program and how much value it brought to the community. Uh, how it defined the quality of life for people there and how good it was to kind of get outside and it kind of defined uh, like the outdoor recreation aspects of things. Uh, but it was also valuable for the economy, uh, property values, and it kind of defined the culture and the fabric of that community. And so I really uh, uh, encouraged my friend, you know, we were just talking about this program and he said, you know, if you're so passionate about these things, why don't you run for town board again? And I said, oh, no, Joe, absolutely not. I'm not doing that again. Uh, I said, I don't belong to a political party. Uh, I tried that, and it just didn't work out for me. And he said, you know, Ryan, maybe this is your time uh, again. And I said, well, I don't, I don't know about that. So after consideration, I applied 
and interviewed with the town Republican <laughs> committee, but they didn't endorse me again a couple weeks ago. Uh, Ryan, you have 30 seconds. I understand that. Uh, so the town Republican party didn't endorse me and I understand that I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. Uh, but tonight I wanted to address that I am gonna start uh, as of tonight an exploratory committee uh, about running for the town board and bringing my passion for environmental issues and conservation and good economic development to the town. So if people are, are interested in helping me, please send me an email at ryan at ryanstachok.com. Mr. Stachok, your time is up. ryanstachok.com. Thank you for your political statement. <coughs> All right, let's see. Um, Mr. Westbrook. You have to wait to be unmuted. You're muted right now. I remind you, you have three minutes as well. Good evening. Um, Good Greg evening. Westbrook here. I'm not going to go through my words from last week, but I am going to just kind of try to try to put a synopsis together. So after being involved with the town of Canandaigua for a 10 year period, three years as a planning board, two years as a town board, three years as a deputy supervisor, and almost two years as the supervisor, I thought I'd add some color to our conversation from last week. So I have literally, and I haven't gone back to count them exactly, but I've been involved with over hundreds of meetings in the town as it relates to the development of, the use of, permission to use the lands in which we rest upon the shore of the town of Canandaigua. And at all times, whether we're talking about how to protect the drinking water, how to make sure the storm runoff is handled, how to deal with zebra mussels, most recently how to deal with harmful algae bloom. And finally, we always talk about access to the lake. So I wanna make that very clear. And I started on the planning board in 1991, gives you a perspective of the depth of participation I've had. After almost nonstop communication over the last 70 days between the town of Canandaigua Town Board and the citizens of the town of Canandaigua, I can see there are people on both sides of the issue. And now that all have had the opportunity to speak, it is now time for the town board to make the decision to move forward to put this issue in front of the voters. I believe that everyone who has been involved with this unique opportunity, community discussion would agree that ultimately this critical important decision must be made by the citizens of the town of Canandaigua in a referendum vote. It is time for the board to take the lead now and pick a date as the state law has empowered them to do and give the voters of the town the choice. I look forward to the town board moving this project forward. And I'm sure every citizen is looking forward to the opportunity to have these decisions in their hands. I look forward to the discussions this evening and hopefully we can move this project along to a vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Okay, I don't see anyone else for privilege of the floor. Okay, next we will move to um, priority business. Um, at this time, I will share my screen. Um, if we run into the same, um, sorry, just one second. Um, we have some, some, um, precautions in place in order to prevent what happened last time, as I'm sure you all know. So we need to take some time here and there to make sure that that doesn't happen again. We have some issues which appear to be popping up. Um, for example, we see someone named Patricia Brewer. I see real, there's a real Patricia Brewer and approximately 10 other people named Patricia Brewer. So we're gonna have to be careful with that. Um, and uh, we will proceed with caution. And if for some reason we can't unmute you this evening, um, please feel free to share your words in, in another format. So at this time, I will share my screen and realize if anything close to what happens last time happens again, we're gonna shut right down and um, figure out how to do this without doing it this way, but hopefully our security precautions will help. And um, thank you everyone for coming back and let's keep our fingers crossed. Here we go.
Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yep. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm just going to. Okay, so this first um, screen is a survey map that was attached to the purchase contract. It's a survey that was conducted or um, dated August 6th. Um, excuse me, August 6th, 2020. Um, it shows, this is the Tishner point. This is their property, generally the Kellogg property that we refer to. This is what we received. I'm going to draw on this. So this is generally the, the property that we're talking about. Sometime after getting the, the purchase contract um, was signed, we learned of a restrictive covenant. It, we got the information from various parties, but as you can see, there's nothing indicated in this survey which would show a restrictive covenant. And these things happen, we, have, we learn about them afterwards. Um, and we became aware of the restrictive covenant, like I said, from various sources, one of which was Mr. O'Brien, who is the neighbor's attorney. <clears throat> You'll see on this screen here, I've indicated um, a section in, highlighted in yellow, and then um, the tennis court is indicated in green. The general park area, which is not the whole park area I've indicated over here, and this is the park area that we've spoken about that is subject to restrictive covenants. The lake is over here. The adjoining properties are here. And this is County Road 16 on this side. So when we became aware of this, now we start to do some um, investigation, if you will, to see what those restrictions are and how it might affect the purchase of the property and what we intend to do with the property. So this screen shows the restrictive covenant, as I'm calling it, deed restrictions, whatever you want to call it. Um, this copy was provided to us, I believe, by Mr. O'Brien, the neighbor's attorney. But it's available to everyone on our website and many sources. This is public record as well. And I'm going to read the highlighted portions. Whereas the parties here to are owners of lots 1 through 11 inclusive as shown on a map of cottage lots, parks, and grounds known as Silver Springs, made for Frank K. Marks, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas Kellogg is conveying to the other parties to this agreement a portion of the so-called park area as shown on the aforesaid subdivision map, excuse me, said portion being more, more particularly shown on a map entitled Lands to be Conveyed to Booth, Stuber, and Gleason, made by S. Scott Stevens Jr. on September 22nd, 1981. And we'll get to that as well. The section which talks about some of the restrictions, the restrictions that pertain to what we intend to use it for, um, should we purchase it. And it's highlighted that the park area will forever be kept open and unobstructed and no buildings or structures of any kind or type shall be placed on the park area without the mutual written consent of all parties owning lots one through 11 accepting a tennis court presently on the area to be retained by Kellogg. And then again, the party shall not fence or obstruct, moving in a little bit easier, Glenmead Avenue, which shall remain open to vehicular passage for the benefit of the owners of lots one through 11. So to understand where lots one through 11 are, <clears throat> I will show you this map, which is the original subdivision map and lots one through 11 are here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then since most of the maps that we will look at have north going up, I'll switch to this so you can see a little better because this is most of the diagrams that we're looking at at this particular time. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Again, you'll see lots one through 11 indicated there. There's the park and just generally, this is about generally where the tennis court is. So these lots, which we'll, I'll show you in the next map, were conveyed. So the um, Kellogg family conveyed these lots to these owners on the other side. 
And in that conveyance, this agreement was made. So then the question is, what does that mean for us? You'll see Gleason, Stuber, Booth, um, when these lots that part of the park was conveyed to the owners on the other side, this agreement was put into place. So I'm speaking for myself as a supervisor. Um, I'm not the town attorney and I've been told on many occasions that I cannot act as the town attorney, but I come to this with knowledge of law. It's not my area of expertise, but I've also purchased a lot of properties in my time and do have some knowledge of it. So I tell, I, the things I am saying to you can be confirmed with others, others who have a legal background, the attorneys involved. Um, so it's not my legal opinion and I do not intend to give a legal opinion to others just based on my experience. So when this agreement <coughs> was, these lands were conveyed and this agreement was made and signed by the parties, <clears throat> the area I highlighted here is Glenmead Avenue. By this, I'm going back to the agreement, the party shall not fence or obstruct Glenmead Avenue, which shall remain open to vehicular passage for the benefit of the owners of lots one through 11. So from what I'm reading from public record, this area, which is highlighted, remains open to all of the owners of all the property. And again, remember that property swings around this way. There's no conveyance as far as I can see of there is a driveway, if you will, no right of way conferred on these property owners of what would amount to the Kellogg's driveway. I could be wrong on that and there could be evidence otherwise, but those are things in my opinion that we'll still need to look into. <clears throat> Going from there, this is a diagram that was provided by Kevin Saunders. We received it I received it this morning. Um, it was sent late last night with a letter. And in it, um, so he's the seller's attorney. He generally has drawn out a similar map. And you'll see here, he indicates Kellogg property here. And that's the party that we're talking about, um, which would be conveyed with the sale and would be subject to restrictive covenant. So again, the question is, what does that mean? So we look at, we'll go back to this, which says that the park area will forever be kept open and unobstructed and no buildings or structures of any kind or any type shall be placed on the park area. <clears throat> if you look at, this is a letter from Mr. O'Brien, the neighbor's attorney. <clears throat> He submits that the definition of structure, he uses this definition of structure from town code. Anything constructed or erected which requires temporary or permanent support, placement or attachment to the ground, beneath the ground or to something having permanent location on the ground, including but not limited to gasoline and oil tanks, banks, buildings, excuse me, buildings, sheds, pools, decks, docks, manufactured homes, fences, excluding seasonal snow fence as further regulated in chapter 220, section 220-9K subdivision nine of the town code, signs, billboards, towers, antennas, satellite TV dishes, patios, sidewalks, driveways, and impervious or substantially impervious services. The term does not include vegetative landscaping. So then the question is of course, when I was looking at it, the definition of structure, there's nowhere indicated that the people to this agreement, the parties to the agreement intended to use the term structure. The case law that I found, and again, I'm not advising anyone, this is just my own, what I have found on my own, and it'll become apparent why this is important. In this particular case, we find the plain and natural interpretation of the use of the term structure um, prohibits the erection of a fence. And they use the definition, excuse me, which was found in Black's Law Dictionary, as I recall offhand. Here it is. While we, rec if you'll see down here, Black's mm -hmm. Law Dictionary is the section that was used. <clears throat> now, all of us who have been to law school can tell you that we don't always rely on Black's Law Dictionary for a definition of structure. But in this particular case, they found that the agreement between the neighbor, between those neighbors 
um, the driveway is nothing more than gravel, they conclude that the installation of the driveway was not prohibited by the restrictive covenant and was consistent with uses. So then it creates a question of fact, right? Which we can't, will not be decided by us beforehand unless something can be done and the parties can agree. But I can see nothing in anything that I've read to support Mr. O'Brien's conclusion that structure, um, the term structure was as defined in town code. <clears throat> so then the question is, what did the neighbors believe that those who are subject to this covenant believe it to mean? When I looked at a property survey from 1995 on, the, on a neighbor's property, you will see now Glenmead Avenue, and I'll go back, I'll use a highlighter. <clears throat> You'll see that now in this, there is a gravel patch here on the park area next to what is um, an easement that was granted for the sewer. So this party at this time seems to at least be impinging on the protected, the restricted area with a gravel driveway. And to my knowledge, um, and we'll, get, we'll show you later, this now goes around this way, the driveway and bypasses, goes right through the park area. <clears throat> this is an overhead showing that area which we referred to as being part of the deed restriction, which is on the Kellogg property. You'll see here the tennis court. And now you'll see when I was looking at Encore, again, these are all public documents. I noticed that there appears to be another area where cars are parked, indicating a driveway or ga a gravel area, which is on that area, which the parties um, to that agreement are saying should not be impinged upon by a driveway or any other thing. <clears throat> this is just another view of that. So now we look at one of the other neighbor's properties. Um, the original agreement you might recall, and I'll go back to my red pen, <clears throat> Glenmead Avenue, the area which bound the park area went straight through here. And when I looked at this diagram, I now noticed that the neighbor has diverted the roadway and the driveway around this easement, which was granted for the sewer. This party is now completely on that area, which is part of the deed restriction with a paved driveway, paved road. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but the question, the neighbors can do what they want with their own property. But the question now is what does that, now that Mr. O'Brien is saying that roads are structures and paving clearly would be part of that, we as a town have to figure out what is, what does that mean for us? If we as a town are wanting to put in, and again, this is just a better um, view of that. This is from a picture from 2014. I chose this picture because the time of day you can now clearly see and you can even see the outline where this original boundary for the park area and now this property is clearly into that area. <clears throat> so again, these it's, this is property belonging to these people and they can do whatever they want with their own property, obviously. But we as a town are now buying property that these parties are saying is subject to a restrictive covenant that they're apparently they're not all abiding by. So we have to ask our attorneys, again, I'm not the town attorney, how does that affect our purchase and what we want to do with that area? If we are to get into litigation about whether we can put in a roadway or put in a pad for um, park benches or picnic tables. Um, we need to know that. Um, and a lot of this we found out since signing that contract. You'll see here, this is, um, if I can come back. So now I've taken um, a survey. What I did was in order to show how this has changed over time, this is an original survey 
for those lands, which shows the initial route as indicated of Glenmead Avenue going this way and the park area over here, you can see there's no driveway. There is gravel here, which eventually goes around that. And to show that a little more clearly, I then superimposed that on top of an aerial photo. And again, you can see it's not exactly one-to-one, -one, but it's pretty close. Glenmead Avenue is here. And you can see underneath that driveway. Also significantly, as you can see this patch here, on this property, Glenmead Avenue is here, and this owner has put a pad in here um, for the car. And in the next um, slide, I superimposed two pictures on top of each other. And again, now you can see the car, the driveway, and the original area, which was deed restricted, which would have been all of this area. <coughs> So my purpose in bringing this to all to you is to let everyone in the town know what we're doing in terms of figuring out where we go from here with the purchase contract, knowing what we now know now, we have an obligation to the people, the people of the town, excuse me, to um, let everyone know where all of this stands. I'm only speaking for myself on this. Again, um, I'm not advising the town what to do. This is just my personal perspective on things. <clears throat> Based upon um, a lot of things which have transpired in the last two weeks, being threatened on numerous occasions with litigation and various other things, um, which is very disturbing. Um, I'm not afraid of litigation. I spent 30 years, 33 years in a courtroom. And from the perspective of what I found, I welcome the challenge to go to court. I don't I don't appreciate being threatened with legal action. Um, I was also told I have to tell people what I'm thinking, but I think you can tell from what I've done here. I do my homework before I give an opinion. Um, so I would also ask um, our appraiser um, has been harassed. And I would also ask that the people in the town, um, if you have comments about what we have done, let us know and not harass the appraiser. Um, if you intend to go to court, then that's the place to bring that out. Um, but there's no indication from any parties at all that there was any wrongdoing. Um, and I leave that to our, to the appraiser to decide what to do with that information. In the O'Brien letter, um, we were also advised of um, a right of way, if you will, which is described as being over a portion of the Kellogg property. And again, from my look, looking at Encore and other available documents, you'll see on here, these properties do go over this way to get out the, those that's part properties next to it. But there's nothing to indicate it's actually on Kellogg property and I can't find that information that that's on there. And again, those are things which can be um, verified. Nothing in the abstract shows an easement that was granted by the Kellogg's across their property. My understanding is, is that this is all county, um, this is all a right, of, the county's right of way, and perhaps these parties are traveling across it to get to County Road 16. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you can see that in any of the, better in any of the other diagrams, no. So, so where does this leave us? It leaves us with, or me in particular, with saying, um, we need to talk amongst the members of the town board to decide if we go forward. I appreciate that the attorneys for each of the parties here have the best interests of their clients at heart. I have a different obligation to make sure that if we're going forward with this, that the town knows what we may be up against, what the pros and cons are. Um, our town attorney may have a different theory on this. But from my perspective, um, we need to talk before we send it as to a referendum. And I appreciate that everyone's telling us we have to go to a referendum, but before we go to a referendum, the people in the town need to know what they're looking at. So it's one thing to say to go forward with the purchase, but it's another thing to, for the, the people in the town who will be voting to know what exactly it is they're voting on. Are they voting if we go forward to okay litigation to solve this? Or do we make sure this is solved ahead of time? 
before we go any further. We as buyers should not be in a position, in my opinion, to be in a position of litigation. If we're going to buy a piece of property, it should be free and clear, or we should completely understand what we're getting ourselves into. If the people in the town are ready for that and are okay with that, um, I think there are definitely issues based upon my personal opinion, not legal opinion, but um, I do think it's important to slow down and have the attorneys come together and figure out if something can be, if something can be agreed upon. Um, the other parties that live at this location have not, as far as I can tell, reached any agreement with regard to either of these properties and what they can and can't do on the park area. So the question is, was it abandoned? Can it still be enforced? What parties can enforce it and what can be done? I think that's all that I wanted to cover in my... Um, the only other thing that I wanted to say at this particular time is that as some of you who um, have threatened to see me in the courtroom are confusing appraisals and assessments. It's a big difference between the two. So while you may have experience in one thing or another, um, the way that land might be measured for an appraisal is different from an assessment. You'll notice in this particular survey, it's not tie line to tie line. I'm just using this as an example. Again, my opinion, but definitely something that we need to look into in terms of um, how property is appraised and how we do it. <clears throat> I would like to publicly apologize to Mr. Legret, who had um, some threats against him in terms of his, whether he was somehow being in cahoots with the town um, and other things being done to his reputation, which uncalled for. Again, if you have any issues with what the town is doing, please contact the town, not someone who is working in his professional capacity. That's all that I have to say at this time and I will stop sharing my screen. So Kathy, could you summarize your conclusion then from that? Sure. Just so my, my conclusion is speaking for myself I do not personally feel that this is ready to go to referendum. I think that we have to clarify those issues which have been brought up since the contract was signed, um, that the attorneys need to sit down, see if they can work this out um, and then come back and based upon those findings, then go to a referendum. Just to be clear, I think this is a great idea. I think I love, as I've said from the beginning, it's no secret, I love this piece of property, but if we're going to proceed as a town government in the best interests of the town, then we have to make sure these things are resolved. And I know people may feel differently from me, but that's my personal opinion on this. Um, so I do think it has to go to a referendum. I don't think it's ready to go to a referendum. If we sent it to referendum right now, the question is what are people voting on? Are they voting to go forward on a piece of property that's already going to be subject to litigation? Or are they just deciding that this is a good idea and in the meantime, we can try to work those things out? Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think that was what I was thinking. Is there a possibility for, um for things to work in parallel so that the decision ultimately does get made. I think so. I think the attorneys sit down and look at the contract um, with our understanding of what is going on. Um, and then we meet again after the, the parties, the attorneys duke it out. If we can't come to a meeting of the minds, then I, I'm not, I don't want to hold anybody up. I and the Kellogg's have a beautiful piece of property and they have every, right to sell it um, you know, in this free and open market economy. And the neighbors have every right to protect their interests. Um, and again, I'm not saying anyone has done anything wrong. I'm just speaking as town supervisor and based on my, what I feel my obligation is going forward. Um, so that's my, um, we may have to do an executive session to 
hammer out these things, but I wanted to, before we did that, let everyone know what the issues are. So it's not, <clears throat> it's not any secret. It's all out there. It's all, nothing that I have done other than some legal research is, well, even that's public record. Um, it just happened that I, I did it just to, for my own edification. The attorneys are the ones that'll have to do that part out. Is there- is it uh, any... Is it possible to uh, ask our town attorney, who is probably listening in here, to offer some comments at this time? Is that acceptable? It's, accept <clears throat> it's acceptable to everyone else, sure. Yes, I would like to hear from him. Um, I think that the easement issues, and I'll, I'll group everything as an easement. I know there's some um, a use agreement and you know, a Glenmead Avenue easement, um, but I'll group it all as what I would term <clears throat> easement issues. Um, those are generally worked out as part of closing, um, but they don't have to be um, to work those issues out. And I think Kathy summarized uh, the easement issues about as well as I could at this point um, to, to render a formal decision as your town attorney, I would need to see a survey that had the abstract of title read into it. And I've told some of you this, but you know, a survey would that, that had the abstract read into it would show every single easement with a little note, you know, it would be right on the survey, the lines of where, what, what exactly was covered by the easement um, with a little note saying, you know, easement recorded in the Monroe County or the Ontario County Clerk's Office and Liber this page that on such and such date. And I could go look that easement up and I could verify that that area was not going to pose a problem for the town's uh, potential use of this as a park. Um, and that would happen before closing. Um, we can, of course, uh, discuss with the seller's attorneys uh, getting that done in advance or uh, adding a contingency to the contract. Um, you know, I, I understand that the town's not interested in holding up the sellers here. Um, I think that they could be done in tandem. You could move forward to a referendum um, while we negotiated any ch potential changes to the contract. Um, and I think that would show progress. You know, if at the end of April, early May, we had a vote scheduled, um, if for some reason we absolutely couldn't uh, come to an agreement on, a re on contract revisions, uh, New York State Town Law Article 7 specifically provides that uh, something put to a referendum when it is withdrawn by the town, the referendum is over. There's not going to be a public vote. So the town law actually specifically contemplates moving forward in tandem. Um, and I think for the very reason that it takes a little while to put a vote together and the uh, town law specifies not less than 60 and not more than 75 days. So we have a 15 day window. You got to schedule it far in advance and there may still be some details to work out. Um, similarly, I think if there was going to be a workshop meeting or a couple workshop meetings, which I think would be a good idea, those could happen between the scheduling of a vote and the actual vote. Um, I'd say rest assured that before this property is purchased, I will make certain that, you know, that the town is not entering into an agreement for land that it's not going to use or not going to be able to use as a result of easements. Based on my preliminary review, based on the documents that I have, an unupdated, uh, unupdated abstract of title and a draft survey, I think I agree with Kathy. They're not they're not going to impact the town's use of the property, but I can't render a formal decision until I have, uh, you know, a certified title search and uh, abstract of title and final survey signed by the surveyor. What kind of timing would that require? Uh, to have the form of the documents I need to make that decision. Right. Uh, not a terribly long time because they already have a draft survey that I'm sure the surveyor would just need to update it and sign it after reading abstract of title in. Uh, the problem is those documents, an updated abstract of title and uh, 
a final survey aren't cheap and are by contract produced by the seller. And uh, Chris, once we, if, if it were to be voted to go to referendum, how much time would there be between the vote and when the election would have to be done? Uh, between not less than 60 and not more than 75 days. So I put you right at the end of April, early May. If that, if you made that vote today. The, the, you know, if you make that at your March meeting that puts you end of May, early June. Seems like there are a lot of moving parts still. I'd more, be more comfortable having it a little bit more ironed out before putting it out there and locking ourselves into that window. That's well, I, 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 and I, I, I don't think, I don't disagree with you, Jared, um, but I do want to reiterate that you're not locking anything. Um, look it up. Town law specifically contemplates unlocking it. If, uh, if you, uh, sorry, I'm searching for the specific section. I think it's town law section 91 or 92 um, that it specifically says if the town board decides not to can follow through on the act, if at your April board meeting, I present to you that guys, you can't buy this. this there's tons of easements running all over this property. You'll never be able to use it. Then you take a vote. You say, let's not do this. At which point the referendum is automatically canceled. Canceled. Oh, that's good to know. This has been a while that we haven't been able to discuss it as a board. So I think that this information is helpful. Definitely. Agreed. I, I, so where, yes, where do I, we go from here? <laughs> I, I feel like I, I feel like we should make a motion pursuant to the law that we would go forward. And then as we find out things, if we have to take it back, we would take it back. But I would get it on the calendar just because it's already been, we've had a, a bunch of hearings. There are people on both sides. There's good reasons from many people for and against. I, I think putting it to the townspeople is where we all feel it should be. Um, or at least, I don't know, I'm speaking for me, but I guess I've gotten that gut feel from people that we all wanna give the voters the chance to speak and that if we if we at least get it put out there, maybe even we schedule it at 75 days to give us the most time to find information. And then if we're still finding that we're conflicted or it doesn't work well, we have to stop it at that point. But at least we're not waiting, waiting, waiting. It feels like, you know, the voters really do want to have their say here. I, I will say this, that this, and I, not speaking for the sellers, but the seller's attorney did send us a letter uh, earlier today that, you know, seems to indicate, uh, you know, an understanding that we may put this to a vote. And I think not speaking for the sellers, but if they're going to sell this property, they'll need an abstract and a final survey. I think they can get the final survey. Um, you know, it's not going to take me, it's not going to take the full 75 days for to confirm that there that there aren't easements that will cause a problem, it would be sixty days. I guess or the or less. issue is cause a problem. Depends on you know what you determine. Clearly, the neighboring properties think that they have a cause of action. Whether the other properties to the south think they have a cause of action, um, whether we will be in litigation from the minute we purchase this property, I think goes into determining what people will do um, in terms of whether they wanna go forward with it. I say, um, we, my personal opinion is we take a step back, we keep going, um, looking into whether this, um, if the attorneys wanna renegotiate, if the Kellogg's feel that we're not acting in good faith, um, those are things that you guys can, that you guys get paid the big bucks to work out. Um, but just speaking from, I don't see going forward with this at this particular time, but if you want to put it to a vote, I guess you know where I stand on it. I don't want to say no to the project. I just don't think that we should be bound to go forward with 
because we didn't have this information in the beginning and now having it, um, I think the voters deserve to know what, before we go forward, 675 days is not a lot of time to get all these things ironed out. Um, and so it seems like a lot, but I can tell you I've been working on this myself pretty much nonstop for weeks. Um, and so I just, I'm concerned that we're putting a time period on us. I'm, I would like to help the Kellogg's. I understand their situation and by help them, I mean, they're acting in good faith as far as I can see. And this is their state and this is their future. But, you know, everyone has their own responsibilities here. And my responsibility is to the town and to only go forward with the best information that we have. But if others feel differently, um, I see we have some hands up. This is not um, a public, we'll, we'll have um, the continued public hearing, so. So if we were gonna put up, if we were holding off and if we had a target of next meeting, it's March 15th. So that would put us roughly May 15th, set third, you know, second week of May to the end of May. Um, I'd, be, I'll, I'd be more comfortable with that time frame. Like Kathy was saying, giving us the time to make sure we're good. It's only, it's a few more weeks out. It gives us the opportunity to see if any engineering needs to be done, any other things need to be done that might change the scope of the project on the property. Um, we'd have that time to, uh, to to work with that, and it'd give us a little bit more time. I'd be you're much saying, more comfortable with that. I think we would make a decision in three weeks. Is that what you would like, Jared? Uh, our, but I think if we were to come back, come together by the next board meeting, I think that's the most fair, in my opinion, to say, okay, let's see. I mean, unless something crazy happens, but that gives us a few more weeks. We have this amount of time, and then we can start that clock for a referendum. And we would be asking, we would be asking the attorneys to try to resolve mm -hmm. some of those easement issues in that three week or whatever period that gives them a few weeks and then by the end of may it'll be done snowing maybe so it'll be a little nicer weather as well so well, also i think the uh, family itself is interested in having something resolved before memorial day i believe somebody said that yeah which Some i think during in jared's time frame that could work that could work and then we'd have the yeah. referendum and we would know well we absolutely have to have a referendum i felt yep. that way all along, and I, and I know everybody else has too. We yeah. also need to hold um, public workshops in order to take the questions that have been asked and put out the factual information, everything that we have assembled, answer the question. I mean, the questions probably boil down to half a dozen to a dozen particular areas that can be addressed and factual information presented. Right. I say and if we can get, if we can, attorneys, you know, dealing with attorneys is um, always difficult, I think. And, uh, hey, you know, try, hey, <laughs> I got the floor, Chris, come on. Uh, Sorry. No, but I mean, it's, it's, time is kind of like uh, grabbing a handful of smoke, you know, it, it's, you want to keep the ball moving and, and, and get those questions answered by that. March 15th, I think, is our next meeting. So is that doable? Well, unless we could find, you know, we would at least get updates along the way and see if we know. If it can't be resolved, then we know it can't be resolved. And then we're going forward with that information. And yeah, I, I feel we got, you know, we were in the, you know, in the process, we got a little over our toes some um, where we were trying to make decisions when we didn't have all the information presented to us. And this gives us that time. This gives I us think, time to do that. you know, to be fair, a lot of this, you don't find this information out until you right. start to move forward. Exactly. When you sit down with the nuts and bolts and people, you know, this information comes out. That's the, that's the purpose of this period mm -hmm. of time. That sounds good to me. Well, uh, I'm not certain that I can, I mean, I can give you a pretty good guess at your, you know, by March 15th, but I, I can't promise that I'll have this Right. You know, we, to a point where I can give you a render a formal decision. Right. Ultimately, it may, be, ultimately it may be up to 
a jury, a judge, an appellate court, but then at least we go forward knowing that that's the case, that we may be in litigation. That's the, that's the issue. It can't be resolved, and I'm not saying it can be, then at least we go forward knowing that that's a possibility. Are you, Cassie, are you talking about two different um, legal questions here? I mean, one regarding easements and those issues, but then should we decide, should the townspeople decide to go ahead? Are you talking about post-acquisition litigation also? Sure, that's always possible if um, the neighbor neighboring um, property owners, which brought to or initially brought to our attention the restrictive covenants, um, say, hey, um, I still think that you can't do anything with that that piece of property, which is subject to the restrictive covenant. Um, they don't have to promise us they're not going to do anything. Maybe maybe they could be some negotiations about it um, in return for um, whatever they're willing to do in negotiations with the town. In other words, um, we will release you and agree that you can, if you wanna divert your driveway over the driveway into the park over this way to avoid us um, and you put in plantings that, you know, keep us private, maybe we'll be willing to, and you allow us to keep our, um, we'll agree that our encroachments on that area, as I showed you on the diagram, will stay that way. A new agreement, a new easement, something like that could be worked out. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. Um, again, that's uh, for those guys to sit down and hammer out. And if they can't, then we go forward knowing, um, as I've been threatened all along, that we're going to, um, we'll see you in court. So even after we go forward, if Chris comes back in a month and says, this is what it is. Um, it can't be resolved. Um, the thing about the law is it's not very times a, def a lot of times definite. It's subject to many interpretations. That's why we have attorneys on all sides and then a judge or a jury decides. So Chris can come back with his best guess. Um, and if he doesn't get agreements from people, then we go forward knowing that we may be in litigation on that issue. Um, my personal opinion is that, you know, their use of <coughs> and putting in a gravel, perhaps a gravel road, um, two things. They may have, as I said, they may have either abandoned it or their understanding of it is different than what um, they're saying now in terms of roads and gravel roads by their own use of them. Um, but that's not a, something that can be resolved by me or Chris or anyone. It may, sit, may require sitting down with the parties in an agreement, which can't be reached an agreement in terms of that, then... Um, you know, we get our best guess whether it's worth it to go forward in litigation. After, if we were to purchase the property, um, Mr. O'Brien and the neighbors may come forward and say, you can't put that road in. You can't do that. Maybe we don't have to do it. But again, those are things we can look into ahead of time. <laughs> lawyers. Yes, I agree. They're the worst. I mean, not the other had, lawyers, just me. Shakespeare had something to say about it, I think. <laughs> Well, it seems like from your analysis that it isn't as clear cut as maybe that letter originally uh, scared us into feeling. So thank you for doing all that homework and looking at it so carefully. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like we I do want it to move along and us to make a decision ultimately one way or another. So I'm good with the pushing it to March 15th and trying to get as much done as we can in the meanwhile and then talking about it um, again. But and I feel like we're at the point in these public hearings where we're hearing the, the same information. Um, and so after tonight, I would propose that we listen tonight again, and then we, um, you know, wait until the little sessions where there's some more strategy or some more of the information presented and let people interact in that manner. Okay. I agree. Yeah, are, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yes, Gary. Okay, fine. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties I've had. Uh, but uh, I agree, uh, you know, I'd like to hold off also. I'd be in support of that to March 15th also so we can get some more of the information that's needed to be obtained uh, before we can proceed as well forward. So I just wanted to throw that out to you. All right. Hey. All right, so... Um, 
unless anyone, any of the any other board members or Chris have anything to say on that, we're going to move forward. I don't think I will have much more information than we have now by March 15th. And that may be the case, but you can sit down and talk to the other attorneys and they can tell you to take a hike or you can come back to us with some more information based upon um, what your research shows. Again, I'm not the town attorney. Um, and uh, th those are my concerns. Okay. All right, moving along. Um, we were to have a presentation um, by Mr. Jim Legret, um, but I, I regret to inform the um, people that are here that Mr. Legret will not be presenting. And again, my apologies to Mr. Legret for the harassment and abuse he has taken. <clears throat> At this time, we will continue with um, a public hearing. Um, the first portion of this hearing is the exploration of the proposed purchase of 3950 County Road 16. Um, we are going to consider these properties separately as we have all along. So if you would like to be heard, um, again, it's three minutes. I will enforce the three minutes. Um, but as for this hearing, um, if I could have a motion to open this hearing or continue the hearing. I don't really know that we need a motion, but. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. At this time, the public hearing on County Road 3950 County Route 16 is open. Does anyone <coughs> heard on that property at this time? Um, I see someone identified as Suzanne Spall. I don't think that's Suzanne. Um, but remember your comments have to be as to the 3950 County Route 16. Doug, can you unmute Suzanne Spall? Suzanne's other half. Oh, you're unmuted now, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, 3950, a lot of questions have been raised for public safety, crossing lights, crossing guards, steepness of banks, um, meeting the federal regulations on handicap accessibility. How are you going to be doing that? The cost of putting in and removing a seasonal dock every year, protection of people on the dock in case of lightning strikes, uh, condition of the house. Has there been an engineer study done to see if there's any asbestos? Being an older home, uh, it's a lot more than likely there's some in the siding or flooring or wrapping heating ducts and things like that. What's the town's intention about restoring that house, tearing the house down, and what's the cost going to be if they find a lot of asbestos? We had a old farmhouse in Pittsburgh we tore down last year, and their total cost to remove asbestos was $225,000. So there, a lot of questions have been asked about 3950, and to my knowledge, there has been no answers given. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard on that property at this time? Uh, Marion has her hand up. Yes, thank you. Go ahead, Marion. Mute. Okay. Um, I wrote in a whole letter in regards to 3950, but I would like to emphasize one part of that, and that is the trail connecting Lakewood Meadows down to the RSM development, whatever that's ultimately going to be called. Um, those two properties as it is now, there is a portion where they, where the borders touch. There's no reason for the town to have to buy some of the RSM property, even if it's 20 or 60 feet wide, there's no reason for the town to get involved in that whatsoever and purchase that property because the residents of the two communities could have their HOAs work out an agreement where they just simply connect them. If we allow the people to take care of it themselves, it, it means, number one, that the town wouldn't have to maintain that trail. And it doesn't make sense because it's only a trail that those two communities are going to use. You're not going to have a trailhead up in Lakewood Meadows where people come in from elsewhere and park and then walk down the trail. And you're not going to have a trail trailhead at the bottom where people are going to park and walk all the way up the top. It's going to be those two residential units that are gonna be using that to either get up to Middle Cheshire to walk run or to come down to Westlake Road to their boats at German Brothers or wherever. But it doesn't make any sense for that portion of it, that trail for the 
town to get involved in that process whatsoever. All right, thank you. Anyone else on that piece of property? All right. Effie, I may have seen, I'm not sure if Julie Simmons was trying to speak on that property. Maybe explain how people can raise their hand. Julie, if you yeah. want to speak, raise your hand, go ahead. I see. Yeah, I, I can't seem to find where to raise my hand, but I did want to speak on that property because um, I, so many comments about safety and this, and one of the reasons why we shouldn't have a park there because of safety issues. Um, and so, and I wrote, followed this up with an email as well. I really don't understand why the safety issue has not been taken care of. Um, having a, I know I could not have a private business on that road, utilizing the side of the road. Um, and that shouldn't be a reason why you shouldn't purchase that property. I'm all for purchasing that property. I'm all for developing, uh, you know, having public moorings. I think there's only two available on the entire lake. Um, but to, to dismiss that property because another problem has yet not been taken care of. Um, I think people that really want that property, I think that uh, they're, they're skeptical of even saying yes because security, parking, um, and issues like that have not been talking about. They've, there's no detailed plan for that. So I really would like to hear finally a detailed plan for that. So for people that are uh, on, you know, on the fence of saying yes, uh, they, can, they can have some relief about the security and all the other details, all the other expenses um, that are moving forward for that piece of property. All right, thank you, Julie. Anyone else on that piece of property? Greg. Thank you, Kathy. So um, some may know, some may not know, uh, I own adjoining property to that trailhead all the way from, not from about 800 feet up off of Westlake Road heading west. Um, I've walked that land. I've enjoyed that land. I think it's a great use of that property. I think it should be uh, designed a little more thoroughly. I agree with you, Julie. I think you're exactly right. There's more expectations that need to be set because people can't get excited about it or upset about it until we know what we have, right? So I, I support your view. But I also want to go back to, there are other purposes here and these are bigger purposes. That's preserving the integrity of the lake. Don't miss that folks. Don't miss that at all. That's a big part of this plan. And I have one question for the town board. Is this or is this not being considered under the referendum or not? Can somebody please answer that? Sometimes you don't can't do it today, that's fine, but just give me an answer to that one so I understand that completely. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. I believe we have Eli Fewerman, or if I'm saying that incorrectly, I apologize. Yeah, my concern is that I hear like comments that uh, Ted Spall raises and things like that. Will the town respond to some of these questions that are being asked? in terms of safety, potential costs, things like that. I mean, it's hard to make a decision if we're not gonna be giving answers to the questions that are raised. I mean, and I've listened to these now two or three different times, lots of questions keep getting asked and it seems like the town board has basically said that they wanna you know, move forward on that, but it doesn't seem like a lot of answers are given back to the residents that are on this call as to what the answers to the questions are. So I will, although we don't generally answer questions on that, yes, the intention is to do, as you may have heard Mr. Um, Fennelly say, um, workshops or things of that nature. We get, the questions all come down to basically six or seven categories. And yes, um, we do intend to um, answer those questions before um, you go, before it goes to referendum. And if they aren't answered in the way that you want them answered, then I guess the answer to that is that we wouldn't want to go forward. But obviously, yes, we would want to answer all those questions and have the, the appropriate answers. Mr. Stachok. Maybe the other thing you want to point out is that uh, many questions have already had some answers posted to them um, on the website. You know, Doug's been putting some things out there. So 
not all the questions have been answered, obviously, but um, there have been some that are out there in case people aren't aware of it. I think you just told them that, so thank yeah. you. Um, Ryan. Hi, my name is Ryan Stachok. I'd like to comment on uh, the property here. Um, I would like to encourage the town board that even though these two properties are being considered separately, that I, I do strongly encourage that this property also go out to a referendum to the people. This is still a substantial amount of money. This should be in the hands of the, of the public and the community in the town of Canandaigua. And I strongly encourage that this parcel and the acquisition of it is put into the hands of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on this property? All right, I don't see anyone else for this property. Okay. Uh, are we ready to close the public hearing? Uh, I believe we are. Well, Close it or continue it. Um, oh, yeah, guess, one more hand. There's another hand popping up. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Spall. I think he spoke. Mr. Spall, we heard you on this property already. Um, I just want to know if we can comment on Tickner Point because there's a few that's, comments. That's coming up next. That's the next public hearing. All right, so we want to continue this hearing. I, I would say close well obviously the, if we're going to go to um what how, how we're going to proceed in the future um would be determined by what we learn in the meantime answering questions um we're not taking any official action at this time um other than to close the public hearing um if you want or we can keep going terry you would prefer to keep going with public hearing well no that had a question mark at the end yeah I'm, Whatever I mean, you guys. If we, if we close it, what are we obligated to do? I mean, there's no action proposed tonight on the agenda. Correct. So. Correct. And if we had action, then we could have privilege of the floor, et cetera. Et cetera. <clears throat> just, shall we continue it then? We continue it to next month. Yeah giving right. us the opportunity to make those decisions. And then like was brought up, we can make, then we would have more information to make that decision if it goes to, if this one as well goes to a referendum and then do them both at the same time. Okay. If we take that yep. route, but it would have that, leave that option open. Um, would someone like to make a motion to continue the hearing? To move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Be continued to next month. All right, at this time we will, um, if I could have a motion to um, continue the public hearing on the proposed purchase of, of 4351 Tishner Point Drive. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The public hearing um, is now open as continuing. Um, and I will start by what I see on my screen on um, Mr. Spall, I believe. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, I want to specifically address, Kathy, your comments. I'm not an attorney either on this private drive. I have a lot of experience in development of land and so forth and deed restrictions. And I think if you compare it, I don't have the map from the 11 lots, one through 11 that you had that's an older subdivision. And if you compare where the driveway is on there, which is Glenmead Avenue, it's much further to the south than what you're showing with the current driveway. And I noticed the name has been changed to Tickner Point Drive now. In addressing the sanitary sewer pump station, when that went through, there must have been some discussion with the neighbors about the pluses and minuses of having sewer and where it would be located. And it must have been a neighbors approving that location. And also maybe at the same time approving the relocation of the driveway to the west around the pump station. So you're, you're speaking a little bit here out of touch because it takes a unanimous decision of the four landowners on Tickner Point to approve any changes in that park area. So I, I maintain the park area is larger than the show. 
And I maintain if nobody objected to the relocation of the driveway, you can't use that as a precedent to establish your own drive and your own parking. Uh, going further, I'd like to know the town is pretty deep into this. The neighbors, the taxpayers have no idea what your development plans are. Do you have any sketch plans to show people uh, where parking lots are, where buildings are proposed in the future, uh, where the driveway is going to be? Because there's a sight distance issue coming down that hill going north to south, which you may have to address with a turn line. Um, I'd like to know that. I'd like to know if you're going to be subject to that development plan for seeker review with the DEC before this moves ahead. And lastly, on the proposed permissive referendum, I'm understanding now the timetable, but where do, you, where do you stand with who's going to be able to vote on that? Is it going to be restricted to town of Canandaigua taxpayers or anybody above the age of 18? Uh, who's going to be allowed to vote on spending taxpayer money? I'm assuming it's going to be the taxpayers. To be registered. Yeah. Just the taxpayers. Thank you for taking uh, my information. Um, just on the one thing that you just said, um, when the pump station was put in, there was another landowner and Glenmead Avenue continued to stay straight after that was put in. I didn't include every survey map and every map that I found, um, but you would see if you look online with public records that when that was put in, Glenmead Avenue, which became Tishner Point, still went straight and to the east of the pump station. It was at a later time under a different owner that it went around. So I think that answers that question. Um, and my intention was not to answer all the questions, but rather to raise questions to be decided by others than me. Mr. Mills. Thank you. Oh, Kathy, am I yes. there? Hi, yes, Kathy, how are you? Oh, I've been better, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, but I promise I won't put anything adverse on my screen. Um, <laughs> Doug, Kathy, uh, I appreciate all the presentation that you have given, but being limited to speak for three minutes, I think truncates a lot of what we say. Um, I'm not going to get into the appraisals. I believe other people have well documented that. I would like to bring up two things and two things only. Um, Mr. Spall uh, teed that one up for me. I do not think I would be able to vote. Uh, I am not a primary resident of Canandaigua. This is my secondary residence. And I think many of us on the call are in the exact same position. So while I feel a vote is important, we must ask ourselves, and Doug, please answer this, and I will follow up if I don't hear an answer, of your tax base in dollars and cents, not in residences, in, in the actual dollars paid of your tax base, how many of those dollars can vote versus not vote? I have never voted in a single Canandaigua voting election of any sort. So would I be able to vote? This is not my primary residence. So putting it out for a voting referendum sounds great, but in reality, you may not hear our voices. And I think that is a problem. I think the way Canandaigua Lake is and the way the tax base is structured, there is an intrinsic issue. This is unique. You must look at that and how we vote, number one. Number two, until tonight, when Kathy discussed the threat of litigation from the neighboring residences, there was very little talked about those neighbors. I look at litigation as a last resort and especially the threat of litigation, but it is something that our courts reserve to protect people's interests. I've been involved in litigation. I avoid it at all costs possible. But what we must sit back and look at and begin to focus on is the residents neighboring this park and how does that affect them? We can all agree, at least I think those residents all agree, and, and they are vocal about it, that this negatively impacts them. This is not a simple solution. I believe there should be more public access to this lake. This is not the right place. You must look at where this park is going, look at the neighbors, and please, Doug, in your presentations, start including that the neighbors surrounding this park are opposed to this park. I went to Ananda today. I love Ananda. I read a sign. It became a park in 1989. 
prior to that. I think it, it was a YMCA camp, I believe, since 1909 or 1919. That's a long time ago. So we love that park, but you have to understand how long it has been there and how established it is. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say to everyone that every input we've gotten from every person is available online, including conversations we had with the neighbors, um, which were videotaped, Zoom, everything's online, everything's accessible um, to anyone at any time. Anyone else wish to be heard on this? Do you see Mr. Uh, Felton? Mr. Felton, I don't see him, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. You're still muted. You're still muted. Give it a second. We'll get to you in a second. Well, it's Doug. Can you, you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, before any referendum occurs, I think the taxpayers deserve to have a full plan for traffic and safety. The traffic is a nightmare, as I pointed out now three times. And the safety is an issue as well. And especially the neighbors who will be literally surrounded or, or very closely adjacent to this park. You talk about a negative impact. But in the meanwhile, we need to have a plan, not assessing traffic in February during a blizzard but assessing traffic and a plan for the traffic and a safety plan during the peak Canandaigua uh, time of enjoyment of the lake, because it's gonna be a whole lot busier in June, July, August, September than it is in January and February. And I think we deserve to have a plan, not a workshop not a discussion group, a written plan that the taxpayers can look at and say, is this something I want? Because otherwise, if it turns into a nightmare, there is indeed going to be litigation. Thank you. Um, we have quite a few people. Um, I have someone um, identified as Mr. and Mrs. Brewer. Uh, but if you could identify yourselves, as you know, we had other people that came in under um, yeah. your name. So you're unmuted now. So just if you could identify yourselves, please. Thank you. Uh, my name's Ted Brewer. I'm here with my wife, Patricia. Thank uh, you. Patricia is a bit of an IT expert. She's helped many other people that aren't so facile with computers get <laughs> online. That's why you see her name so often. Okay. Thank so you. Thank her for that effort. I have a, a comment and I'm, I'm, I'm interested, as I think we all are, in providing the best possible access to the lake. Those of us that are on the lake realize what a wonderful asset it is, and we're pleased to see others enjoy it. So I've got an idea that I'd like to see the town examine, uh, and it relates to Atwater Park. For those that don't know, Atwater Park is about two to 300 feet across the town line into the city. So it's a city park, but it almost literally borders the town of Canandaigua. It's a very large property. I'm not sure how many acres, but I would suspect that it's six, eight, 10 acres or more. A lot of frontage, maybe a thousand feet or so. Uh, shallow water, which would be excellent for swimming. Kayaking already allowed there. And I had a conversation with Bob Palumbo, the mayor of Canandaigua, and he is receptive and welcomes the town of Canandaigua and working on some sort of joint venture to establish a more vibrant park at Atwater. And I would point out, since it's already a park, it's not a giant intrusion into a residential neighborhood that people aren't expecting. Additionally, as a joint venture between the city and the town, the cost could be far smaller than any of the ideas that are being entertained right now. It, additionally, the town has, as part of its park objectives, uh, developing relationships with other municipalities and governments for joint ventures. So it seems to me that this falls right within the town's objective statement. And it's a wonderful opportunity to be explored. And if successful, it could come to a wonderful culmination for a fraction of the money that we're talking about now. Probably no tax increase. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Mr. McGuire. Hi, yes, uh, my name is Matt McGuire. Uh, uh, I wanted to speak on the fact that as a former employee of Canandaigua, um, I worked at Onanda Park and I frequented it uh, very often in the past uh, 10 years. Um, I think it's a really underutilized property and um, I think that development of that and some improvements there would be a, a much better use of taxpayer money rather than this new park. Um, see, like working there and seeing how, when the busy hours are, um, it's really only overcrowded or packed on a few weekends out of the year and um, weekdays and weeknights it's rarely used. I think that further education of the population that that asset is there would be a beneficial thing to do rather than spending a ton of money on a new part. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. O'Brien, I expected to hear from you. <laughs> Doug, can you unmute? There you go. All right, I'm unmuted. Uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, state that uh, you made reference to my letter a couple of times, and I don't recall having threatened litigation in that letter. I think no, I, it wasn't you. I'm sorry. I, I, I think I articulated not. some concerns uh, on the on behalf of my clients, and I certainly don't condone harassing the appraisers uh, for doing their job. Um, I, I I think I'm a firm believer in the rule of law, and while litigation is always an option whenever there's a dispute. Um, I do agree it's a last resort. And even though I'm a litigator, I, I really work feverishly to try and avoid it if possible. And, and to that end, I'm certainly willing to discuss this with Mr. Nadler or, or uh, Mr. Saunders, uh, people for whom I have great respect. But I think the uh, issues that have arisen and uh, are sort of uh, persistent here need to be addressed by the town. And uh, I, I agree with you that uh, it certainly uh, is gonna be an issue of fact as to exactly what the uh, scope of those easement rights are and uh, where they what they cover geographically. Uh, but that's, that's only one of several, I think, key issues that have been recurring here. The other one is uh, the, the State Envi Environmental Quality Review Act. I, I don't think that this is uh, an action that uh, is subject to a short form review. I think you need a full blown coordinated review. You probably are going to have to make a finding <coughs> of, of uh, significance here because of the proximity of the lake and the traffic issues. You've got to bring in the town and the county, or excuse me, the state and the county. Uh, with respect to the cost of the, of the uh, property, I think that that's a legitimate a concern and a big question as to how you value that frontage. Um, the frontage that uh, uh, the appraisers have uh, considered valuable and, and given frontage, full frontage value to is not the same as the, the frontage that would be uh, present as a result of a tie line me measurement. I think we've got some significant safety concerns. I agree with Mr. Felton that the road can be very busy. I lived off of West Lake Road for almost 30 years and uh, people do not adhere to that 35 mile per hour speed limit. And in fact, they go even faster when they go down the hill from Foster Road towards the, what would be the entrance to this park. So those are all significant issues. I think we need a full blown environmental review before we can make a decision. I think that uh, a referendum is certainly necessary given the indication I've heard from the town board that the public needs to weigh in on this. And I am certainly willing to discuss our concerns with any of the other attorneys who might be involved in this matter. Thank you. And Mr. O'Brien, just so I could say for the record, if, if that absolutely, if that seemed to be what I was saying that you were threatening litigation, I have only the utmost respect for all the attorneys involved here. I think everyone's doing their job for their client. And maybe I take that for granted having been an attorney and um, I appreciate the position that you're in and every and all the attorneys are in and you're doing your job. Um, it was not attorneys that were threatening litigation. It was uh, others who were threatening me with litigation. And again, um, I know that the attorneys, 
sometimes it sounds like it just by virtue of you doing your job, but that was certainly, if that was what anyone here took away from this, please understand that I, um, not saying that at all about the attorneys. Um, none of the parties, you know, I respect that the neighbors have um, interests that they're trying to protect. Everyone has those interests. So um, thank you, Mr. O'Brien, for giving me the opportunity to clarify that. Anyone else wish to be heard? Marion. You just have to wait a second. There you go. Now you're unmuted. Um Someone earlier, and I can't remember who it was, mentioned something about not getting the answers to questions. And some of the items that were, that had questions asked about them have been posted. But other than that, there haven't been any answers to questions. One of the questions that I would, I have asked several times and I would like an answer to is, you have both mentioned that um, going through with the Tinchner Point purchase, would cause the town to exceed the 2% tax cap. What I'd like to know is if you, if the town exceeds the 2% tax cap, what does that mean? And does all the appropriate paperwork for, for um, voting to, to go ahead and exceed the tax cap? What does that mean to us as a town? What does it mean to individual taxpayers? What are the consequences of exceeding the 2% tax cap? And are there funds in the future that we would not have access to? Like for instance, I know that in the past, I don't think it's the case now, individuals got a rebate from the state, a, a check, it was not quite a few number of hundred of dollars. Um, and we were able to get that because the town had not exceeded the tax cap. Now, I, I think that that money has gone away, but there are other monies that might come into play. I just, I don't know the answer and I would like you to answer the question, what are the consequences to the town and to the taxpayers for exceeding the 2% tax cap? Thank you. As I said, all we, before we go forward, everyone's questions will be answered. Uh, I see Mr. Twombly. Doug, can you unmute Jeff? There you go, you're unmuted. Thanks, Kathy. I just wanted to um, expand a little bit on um, starting off by what uh, Mr. McGuire told us about the usage levels at Ananda and how there's excess capacity there um, at some peak times. So maybe um, you know, adding a few parking spots to handle it you know, would suffice. And reading through the surveys that were cited as part of the rationale for going through with the purchase in the first place, they really talked more about the um, idea of expanding Kershaw, the swimming and the kayaking areas uh, within that, and also the parking areas that seemed to be an issue. Um, you know, we're a single community here in Canandaigua, so I, I really don't understand this concept by the town that they need to have town ownership of the parks rather than collaborating with the city to bring Kershaw to its full potential and maybe expanding on Atwater also, um, you know, they're both much more convenient to, uh, to a larger group of people. Um, if a new park is developed at Tishner Point, it's really just gonna siphon off some demand from Ananda. You know, I, I can't really imagine it. It's really truly going to bring in significant other people that don't already use the park. Um, I don't think that many are, conf are, are deterred by some peak um, um, demand issues at, at or Ananda. Now I completely understand that there's a um, emotional attachment to this concept of buying lake frontage, but asking the taxpayers to take on 11 or 12% tax increase for the foreseeable future for its purchase and to maintain it just seems like not fiscally responsible thing to do when there's a lot of other options for enhancing parks and enhancing water access that don't require those kinds of investments. I mean, a fraction of that money could apply to a host of other investments that the town could make, like increasing the hiking and biking trails, improving safety on Westlake Road, putting in biking lanes, things like that. So rather than these one-way <coughs> meetings, I think it's time to really start having some workshops where you know you don't just post answers to questions, but we actually have some kind of a dialogue about um, some of the, the questions that we have. You know, one of the biggest issues that we have as property owners next to it is we really have still seen no demand 
um, estimates for the park. We've seen no detailed plans for what's really going to be there. Um, you know, we have no idea why you're con so, so concerned about the deed restrictions, um, whether it's just about moving a road or whether it's about putting up structures or whatever. So without detailed plans, we, we really are lost as to what exactly the grand scheme and the grand um, idea for this park is. And you got to understand, you know, we do live next to the park. When you show your pictures, you're showing the top of our house. Um, you know, we're going to be surrounded on three sides by this park. And we've lo invested a lot of our money in what we thought was going to be our dream home. Um, we realized the Kellogg's would be selling one day, but we thought that, you know, it'd probably be developed into one or two homes. We, we never dreamed that the town would try to shoehorn a park into this little neighborhood of four houses. Yeah, and, and we are concerned. I'll give you 10 more seconds. Uh, thanks. And we are concerned about the town's ability to provide security after hours. And we're concerned about the decrease in our property value. Um, so uh, understand, I mean, we have nothing against trying to have people have access to the lake, but we just think this is the wrong spot for it. Um, trying to shoehorn them into this little area that's been a private residence for years and years and years. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. Twombly. Ms. Simmons. Just takes a second to get you on. There you go, unmuted. Okay. Um, so I, I have uh, what I call shaky legs about um, purchasing this property uh, because like Twombly had, had mentioned, we have no idea what are you going to clear cut the land and put up 20 parking spaces, which anyone that's drove down there knows there's not enough room for that. Um, I believe this is sacred land. I should believe it's like should be treated like the Adirondacks. It should be a forever wild. There should be protocols and details that I really need to see moving forward that I am unaware of. Um, uh, trail cams, you know, taking pictures of people that are coming after hours, noise ordinances, occupancy. There's just doesn't seem to be any rules or regulations. And, you know, uh, often people bring about Atwater Park and they're talking about Ananda not being utilized. I've been to Ananda so many times and you can't even sit on the lawn because of the E. coli goose poop. Um, and not to mention a very small swimming area that I'm just uncomfortable, you know, swimming at. So I really would love to see these uh, issues addressed and I'd love to be a part of them um, moving forward. So please consider uh, me as someone that would really like to take the time and have a dialogue and come up with a detailed plan. So we don't have shaky legs of just purchasing a piece of property and then nothing else gets uh, talked about like the security and um, you know, all the other issues that you know, everyone's very concerned about. So thank you. Thank you. Brian, stay chalk. Good, buddy. Uh, so I do wanna add a little bit of a positive vibe to this acquisition, potential acquisition. Uh, obviously I was quoted in the DNC from the first meeting that this should go out to referendum. I strongly support that, but all these themes of litigation, I think are kind of, uh, not bring into attention conservation that we hear about in our town over and over again. Many, many people, I'm willing to bet a strong majority of people that are maybe don't watch these meetings, uh, care deeply for a healthy environment, clean air, clean water, clean soil. Canandaigua Lake is, is the treasure and our brand of our community for the exact reasons that many people want to live on the lake and have lake access are probably some of the reasons people in our community would like more access to our lake. Over and over again, we hear this from our community. And so I do wanna underscore that this is a, a fantastic opportunity uh, to think about conservation, the greatest good for the greatest number in the long run. And this is an exciting parcel that should not be overburdened by paralysis analysis. Uh, we should consider moving uh, putting this in the hands of the community. And I think that we should be excited and, and grateful that a, a willing seller, willing buyer willing to uh, work with us. And it really is exciting. So I want to make sure that the buyers, if you're listening, thank you so much uh, for wanting to put this, this, your beautiful piece of property in the hands of the town. Uh, I think and you mean the sellers. Thank you very, very much. 
You have time. I think you just said buyers. I think you meant sellers. Are you are you done, Ryan? Or do you need you still have time left on your? I'll talk about for hours and hours on this if anyone wants. You don't have to. <laughs> uh, no, but I just I just want to make sure that everybody understand you know, that the, that the sellers are, uh, recognize that hey man we we there's a many many people that are very excited about this and we obviously have a lot of issues to work through. And I think a lot of our, our, our open space plans and our town uh, comprehensive plans do hint to these things. There are some answers out there. So just want to kind of bring some positiveness to this, to this potential topic. Thanks. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. I think we have Mr. Degman, but I think we have more than one. Uh, Patrick, just when you're unmuted, just make sure you identify yourself. I think your name appears a few times on here. We are unmuting you now. If you just wait a second. You want to raise your hand so that our moderator there. Can you see that, Doug? There you go. Now you're unmuted. Go ahead. Have you got me? We do. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like to talk about is something that hasn't been talked about in detail as far as I'm concerned. And maybe this is not the right time, but I'll take the time anyway. Um, we started this whole endeavor so that we could get um, greater public access to the lake. That's the way when I entered into it that I um, saw was the objective. And that's a very noble cause. And of course, if you presented that to the public, their answer is going to be, of course. If you present it to the public and say greater public access to the lake, at what price? This then brings into the economics of the whole situation. And that's where I'm very, very concerned. Uh, I've written this down and sent it in a letter to the board. I'm sure it's been acknowledged. Uh, but bottom line, we've got a very, very premium property uh, at a premium price in a residential, longstanding residential neighborhood that uh, we're looking to satisfy this objective. Uh, and that price is, uh, you know, it's got about a four to one ratio of its assessed value to its premium value. Uh, seems a little hefty, but I'm not going to get in. I'm not an appraiser. wouldn't get in the appraisal business. But uh, as I heard, there was one time consideration for the Cook property. It was never uh, taken forward because it was too expensive. So what I ask in my own mind from an economic standpoint is, okay, then how do you go for this if at that time that wasn't, uh, that wasn't viable and was considered uh, to, be, to be too expensive at the time? Something seems inconsistent as far as I'm concerned. The other thing is, is we seem to be trivializing what uh, 11 and 12% means to the taxpayers, the broader taxpayers. Uh, if, if you look at that and you are the caretakers, you, you're the stewards of the money for the town, I think this is a very poor time for us to be going and asking the tax base to take on a burden of 11 or 12 percent. It's, it's very burdensome and probably very burdensome to many, uh, maybe that don't even live on the lake. Uh, and if you start to look at the economic uh, environment as we as it sits right now, uh, I have to tell you that the, the there's there's a lot of uncertainty out there on what 2021 brings, what 2022 brings, because there's always ramifications after something like this. Now I hate to bring the broader problems in down into this pro this uh, discussion here. Twenty seconds. Well, but the fact is is that. I think it's irresponsible of the town to be going to the public, to the taxpayer base at this time and asking for 11 or 12% increase. It's just, it's just not timely. Thank you. Uh, I just wanna address a couple of things that you said. Um, the Cook property, we didn't reject because it was too expensive. It sold before we could even have a, have a dis real discussion about it. Um, you're saying that we're trivializing what it means to um, increase taxes. No one's trivializing taxes. The point is letting the taxpayers decide. Um, an idea is an idea. It sounds like a good idea. No one is forcing anyone to do this. 
Um, I'm take it very, I'm a taxpayer. I don't want to pay more taxes unless I know all the facts. Um, and so my intention is to give you all the facts when, um, when all the questions are in. And if we still proceed, we're not gonna go through all these, jump through all these hoops if we're not gonna proceed. You know my position on where the contract stands and whether we even proceed. So um, while I don't generally address every single question, um, I do take issue with you saying, we are trivializing what it means to the taxpayers. Um, any increase in taxes is very important to me and to everyone else on this town board and we take it very seriously. Aaron Mills. Kathy, can you hear me? Yes. I know you don't answer questions. I think it's important to answer this one. This is not my primary residence. This is my secondary residence. You just said it's important that the taxpayers can decide, am I eligible to vote? I'm, I'm going to defer to Chris Nadler. I believe it's people who are registered to vote in the town, but I'm going to. So I, let me clarify. Wait, I'm, I am gonna, not, I'm gonna ask the attorney. I am okay. not, I, but Excuse I am not registered. I'm Excuse asking me. the attorney. I'm not answering your question. Chris Nadler. The answer to the question is that the town electors, which means people eligible to vote in the town of Canandaigua, uh, are the only eligible people. That's not my decision. That's not the town board's decision. That's New York State town law. That does not mean that your input is not important. Obviously, that's why we're doing this. Um, if you don't have a vote, you're, what you're saying is important and will continue to be important and you can be every bit a part of this process uh, as anyone else here. All right, um, I believe Mr. Saunders wanted to be heard. Thank you, Madam Supervisor, and thank you, Town Board. Um, I'd like to um, truly be brief. Uh, I know attorneys sometimes can't do that, but um, th this truly is sacred land. Uh, I'm going to quote one of the neighbors and a treasure, uh, according to Mr. Stachuk. We agree. Um, the Town Board, I, I, I got to tell you, uh, you, you can't win, Town Board. Um, you go out and do uh, a comprehensive plan, and you get 81.1 and 12 percent. 81.1% of respondents saying that lake access is greatly needed or somewhat needed. You go out and you find sacred land at a fair market price by two appraisers. And now you're in this position being threatened. Your, your appraisers are getting threatened. And, and it's not by the attorneys. And we understand that absolutely. I've worked with Mr. O'Brien. He's about as upstanding a person as I can imagine. And I welcome the chance to talk with him and with Mr. Nadler. But that being said, um, some non-issues are being raised here. Um, seeker, um, it, it's not required, but I, I wonder four parcels, if you break this up into four parcels, what has a, a more negative environmental impact, a park or four parcels? Come on. Um, the two appraisals um, were using the most updated methods, not the outdated tie to tie line measurement. That's a red herring. Uh, I'll be very brief on the restricted area and the access to the Policinis and Parkers. It's in my letter. Um, I think both you, Madam Supervisor, and Mr. Nadler eloquently put it, the easement issues. And at this early stage or this, I guess, mid-level stage, um, we all believe that these easement issues are not going to impact the town's use of the property. We agree. And, and the Kellogg's are willing to provide an updated abstract and signed survey with abstract read in. What I'm gonna urge, however, is I've heard you loud and clear, the Kellogg's have heard you loud and clear, um, that they've offered this in good faith. There's a purchase and sale agreement. Um, we understand the closing is supposed to be in April. We've heard you that you wanna go back and ask the town again uh, and put this out to a referendum. Your, your council is intimated that these can be done at a dual path, that you can hear what the town has to say. And if God forbid, Everyone's wrong, Madam Supervisor, you're wrong and I'm wrong and um, your, your attorney's wrong. They can stop the referendum at any point. My suggestion is to listen to the town attorney and do these contemporaneously because by delaying an extra month, the only person that's being impacted is the Kellogg's who are standing by in good faith. And there's no downside to that. Again, Mr. O'Brien, myself, Mr. Nadler can all talk these issues out and if before the referendum, at any point, your attorney can use Article 7 to stop the referendum, if there is something out there that we don't foresee. But to quote 
the board and the Madam Supervisor and uh, your attorney, at this point, we're not seeing anything that's going to impact the total use of this property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saunders. Mr. Mills, you've got cut off. Um, you were only at about a minute and a half into your question, so. Thanks, Kathy. I'll, I'll be brief. <laughs> I, would, I would like to just say here, um, to quote you earlier, we should let the taxpayers decide. I am undoubtedly a taxpayer and I cannot decide. So while I appreciate that my comments are being taken, they are being posted, they are being listened to, and I expect they will be answered in these workshops, we are unable to vote. So I, I, I'll say it again, I think a lot of us that have talked on this are not primary residents here. I am a taxpayer and a good taxpayer, but I cannot vote in Canadagua. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mills. And I do appreciate and understand that. Okay, anyone else? All right. Um, I don't see any other hands at this point. Um, before, I, I think we have to con continue this hearing or do we close the hearing for now um, with the understanding that we have a lot of things to answer. Anyone? I would vote for closure. I'm sorry? I, I would vote for closure. Anyone else have any opinion on that? Uh, does it matter if we continue the other one? No, no, they can be separate. I think I have a, I have, before we go, you guys, Suzanne Spall would like to be, I didn't see you. Go ahead, Suzanne. Just got to wait to be unmuted. I have a question about voting also. Does that mean that uh, anybody who's registered to vote for an election has a vote? It means if somebody is in a family, they have an 18 year old, they have a 20 year old, all those people will be able to vote but the people that pay the taxes will not be able to vote. Chris, you wanna answer that? Yes, the answer to that question is uh, yes. New York State town law provides that electors, anybody who can vote for the supervisor, town board, uh, town justices, town clerk, and town highway superintendent of the town of Canandaigua is eligible to vote. That is not the town board's decision. That's not the town manager's decision. That's not my decision. That's town law. And those, those people are not taxpayers, an 18 year old. Their parents might be taxpayers, but not an 18 year old. Okay. Um, I think we have Eli Puderman again. Uh, I just have a question since you said that there will be answers to the questions that are being asked. Can the uh, town supervisor provide the information of how many dollars are collected in taxes of people that will not be able to vote versus those that will be able to vote? I mean, it seems to me to Aaron Mills point there are a number of us who live in Rochester and use this as a summer home or four or five month a year home that will not be able to vote per the town uh, attorney claiming that it's a New York state law. But what is that? Excuse me, I was not claiming that it is. But okay, it, it is. Uh, and again, I'm not uh, trying to be argumentative with you. It is, it is New York state law. So it would seem to me that you should be able to tell us what the revenue that the town receives from those of us that will not be able to buy or not be able to vote on this decision. So is that something that we can get given as an I don't, I don't know if we have that information. Um, Patricia Brewer, um, if you could, this is obviously a different Patricia Brewer. When we unmute you, please identify yourself. Oh, no, hello. It's gonna be a second before you're unmuted. Now you're unmuted, go ahead. Hi, this is Ken and Wendy Reek. We live here, we are taxpayers and we can vote. Thank you. I believe it is unconscionable that you would move forward with this uh, without the ability of 
uh, residents here that are part-time that cannot vote. Uh, I do not believe that you should put this forward for a town vote and not allow the people who have a strong vested interest in this property and not allow them to vote. That is unconscionable. How, I don't know how you could move forward with that. It's by laws. We have it, no laws. Yeah. Yeah. But you're choosing, this is a choice on your part to move forward with a town vote. Same at the, at, at the we same. We haven't gotten to that point. <laughs> no, but you are discussing it. You we only have so many it. choices. You are discussing it and we're bringing, we're bringing opinion to the, to the, to the table. Correct. You're saying it's unconscionable. I don't appreciate that. Well, it, we're it, following it, the you're, law. You're, 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 you're following the law, but you're also putting people who have a uh, strong vested interest, interest in, in these properties uh, uh, aside a little bit. You're, you're, you're not giving them the full gravity of their own vote. And that's not right. Okay, thank you. Well, at, the, at the same time, I would also say that that you don't, you're not, you're not to someone's point earlier, I don't know who it is, you, you, you don't have a plan that you've put forward. There's nobody, there's, there's no plan to look at. It's almost akin to uh, one of our federal officials saying you know, we have to pass the pass the law in order to read what's in it, right? Or pass the or vote for it to, to read what's in the law. So it's the same kind of a thing where you don't have a plan that you're actually putting forward to say, what, what are we going to uh, be building there? What are we going to be uh, asked to support and fund going down the road? It's just, we're gonna buy the land. And then what, what after that, we don't know. I think those questions have to be answered. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I see Laureen Burke. There'll be a second till we can mute. Um, there you go, you're unmuted. Go ahead, Laureen. <clears throat> okay. So in response to many of the comments, I'd like to just say that I think it's important for people who own property in the town of Canandaigua and who have maintained their voting rights in Monroe County, if they're not Florida residents, need to change their registration. This is something I did around 20 years ago before I moved here full-time, which was around 10 years ago. And all of you can change your registrations immediately. And I encourage you to do so because this has got significant financial ramifications for all of us. And these are issues that have to be addressed by all people. So Aaron Mills, I hear your comments and I think that we can impact that. And if we have children who are 18 or 20 years old who are voting members, those children can also change their registration. It's time to decide which community needs more of our active participation. And right now I think it's Canandaigua. And 10 years ago, I thought it was Canandaigua. So. I would encourage everybody to change their res registration if they are not registered here as full-time people. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go back to Mr. Fuderman. I guess he was cut off, so I apologize. Again, you know, my comment was, it seems to me that there are a number of us who have now spoken in trying to understand why our, we're paying taxes. I understand according to the town uh, attorney that uh, we, by New York state law, are not allowed to vote, uh, even though we're paying taxes here unless we registered to vote here. Uh, but it would seem to me that if you're willing to answer the questions, you should be able to give the members of the community, people paying taxes, but not being able to vote, what percentage of people are not voting here, but are paying taxes. It would seem to me if that's a higher percentage than you realize, you should want, I mean, it's nice that you're listening to us, but we, sh you know, it's basically uh, what the revolution was based on, taxation without representation. I mean, you're asking us to pay the taxes and fund a park or increase our taxes by 11 to 12% and not be able to have any kind of voice in it. And I think that that is fundamentally unfair. Uh, a resident of, by the name of Wendy and Ken just basically said the same thing. And, and they are residents and our voter uh, in Canada. So again, I would ask, and I didn't get an answer to Ted's, my question about Ted Spall's questions. When will we get a specific answer to the question, how many of us have tax dollars that are being paid to the town of Canandaigua or the city of Canandaigua, but are not residents or being able to make a decision on this because we're not registered to vote and uh, 
be involved in a uh, referendum? I don't know the answer to your question. I don't know that we were required to do that. But, but, um, but the question is, are you, willing, are you willing to get us that information? Or are you I don't know. Well, I will let you know. Okay, as long as you're willing to let us know, because it sounds like if you're listening from my position, it's the decisions already been made by you, Kathy, that you want this to go through. That, it's just, uh, just as an outside you, listener, that's what you it's- are, You're wrong about that. I haven't made up. I like the idea of a park. I, I, I think by my- comments today, what I said about everything is we're not ready to go forward. I think I made that clear. Just because I like the idea of a park does not mean I'm committed to spending everyone's money. Again, I don't know. And I told you that I will let you know and I will vote as accordingly. Um, so I don't appreciate the bullying, Mr. Friedman. I will look into whether we have to get that information for you and if we have it available. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Lori Twombly, you, not Mr. Lori Twombly. Lori Twombly, you want you had your hand up for a while. Go ahead. Okay, um, I have two issues. Um, the first, we cannot vote in Canandaigua either, the town, and this is affecting not only the value of our property, it's also our taxes are going to get raised. And we're going to be surrounded by a park in three, on three sides, and we have nothing we can do. We can't vote on it. So I just want to make that a point. I know you can't do anything about it. Um, the second thing I want to bring up is um, I want to propose to keep the hearing open because we need to have a workshop where we can get these questions answered. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I don't think that we need to keep the hearing open to have, I agree, we have to answer your questions. I don't know that we have to do it in the, in the hearing, but um, I will let my fellow town board members um, address that. Bill Bernadovich, and I apologize if I said your name wrong. Just a second until we unmute you. Yes, uh, if everybody can hear me, uh, we live... Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear yes. you. Uh, we, we live adjacent to Onanda Park and uh, for the last year, uh, several years. And my, my concern and our frustration has been that people don't respect the border of the park and our property. We're constantly seeing people walking on our property as well as uh, you know, lighting campfires, leaving garbage, ripping down our posted signs. So uh, I would be sympathetic to uh, the people that are adjacent to the proposed park, just from my experience of uh, not everyone, but there is a percentage of people that don't respect the borders. And that, that would be my concern for this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see someone, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Brewer, if you could just identify yourself. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of people identified as Mr. and Mrs. Brewer. You are unmuted now. Thank you, Kathy. Can, can you hear me? I can. Uh, this is Ted Brewer. I have a... We can hear you. Oh, you got muted again. Uh, hang on a second. Can okay. you hear me oh, now? Yep. Okay. I apologize. A uh, very straightforward question following up on Eli Futterman and Aaron Mills' questions. We have the Residential Lake District, RLD. Right your assessor can calculate with absolute certainty the percentage of the tax base that resides on the lake. It's not the same as the voting uh, percentage, I understand that, but there's no question that you can provide us with an idea as to the exact percentage of the residential tax base that comes off the lake, and I think we'd all like to see that. Thank you. I think we have that information. I know we've answered that. I think Mr. Westbrook asked for that information at one time, how much of the tax base comes from the lake. In fact, I think that was done recently. So um, I will see if we have, we may have that information. All right, um, anyone else? I don't see anyone else. So, um, um, I will leave it to one of my town board members to determine whether we close this or continue this hearing. I'm happy to continue it. Um, I do think that with a, uh, a workshop or whatever we want to call it, whatever format that we answer everyone's questions, 
um, which again is my concern with going forward um, and shortening our time period to answer those questions. Um, we know the concerns. I think we have to answer the questions. So my, my inclination is to close the hearing and continue to answer, continue to the next stage to answer um, the question, everyone's questions. That would be, I think, we're starting to hear the same issues over and over. We need to get to those answers for people. And then I think closing it is the right thing. So can I have a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Anyone want a second? You could. I could, I will second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Jerry. I'm sorry, any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Public hearing is now closed. <clears throat> Moving on to the next item on the agenda. Effie, I don't know if our town clerk is able to ask, just for the record, could we clarify that vote, please? And I'm gonna try to unmute the town clerk here. <coughs> uh, yeah, I didn't get a full vote on everybody. I did not. Do you want me to do a roll call or do you, how do you want to handle it? That'd be the easiest. Okay, Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilwoman Jorzak? Aye. Councilman Fennelly? Aye. Supervisor Manicotts? Aye. Councilman Simpson? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. You're welcome. Next we have, um, next item on the agenda is um, public hearing on the text code amendment in to town code chapter 220-21 that would amend regulations on swimming pools. Can I have a motion to open this hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I now declare the public hearing is now open for this item. Um, would anyone like to be heard? I'm gonna take a second to make sure that we answer all the questions. Okay. Seeing no hands, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The public hearing is now closed. If we could now go to the reports of town officials and department heads. Jim Fletcher. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, nothing new to report from last week. Uh, just to update to everybody in the town that uh, we don't put snow in your driveway on purpose, nor do we like to have snow put back on the road on purpose. So we try to keep the roads clear and safe for everybody to travel. Uh, know that the next couple of days we'll get several inches of snow. Please don't take it out on the plow driver for putting snow in your driveway. That's all I have. Thanks. Let's hope it's a quiet one. Let's hope they were wrong about the snow tonight. All right, um, next we have Assessor Pam. Do you have anything for us? Kathy, I, with it being a holiday, I just don't believe she's able to join us today. I could have sworn I saw I Pam. Her name earlier. She's, she's here. She's hiding somewhere. You might have to, un, you might have to unmute her. Oh, I see her, I see her, I'm sorry. I did not see her there. Thank you. I Go did ahead. submit my monthly report. I don't have any additional comments at this time. Thanks, Pam. Yeah. Town Clerk, Jean. Um, yes, hi there. Um, I forwarded an email, um, actually a scandal letter um, from a Joyce Wicker um, regarding a dog license fee. Um, her, uh, her dog license was due um, in January. Um, she says she did call and spoke to someone at the town um, saying, and she was informed that she could not renew her dog's license until the rabies was 
renewed. Um, I asked her who she spoke with and she could not say who that was. Um, she couldn't remember. Um, so she is asking um, if the town would waive the two $5 late fees for her two dog licenses um, because they were due in January and she came in on February 1st to renew them. Is that a resolution? I just need a motion. I'm willing to make the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Jeannie. Have anything else? That, that was all. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, anyone from planner? Aye. Kathy, no, with the uh, position being vacant, we don't have anyone uh, to, to report specifically on that. Uh, we continue to uh, move forward with the process to do interviews, and we'll be doing those uh, very soon for that vacant town planner position. I can just jump right into my report since I'm talking anyway. Um, yep. Please submit that. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer those. I also want to bring to your attention, we had a request recently uh, for one of our PDR applicants that may be interested in using the national equivalent to the state PDR program versus the, instead of the state program uh, due to timing. Uh, the big difference there is the national program will only fund 50% of the difference in the value of the land for uh, farming purposes or agricultural purposes versus development instead of the 75% that the state uh, funds that. Um, in the past, we have uh, authorized $50 per acre. Uh, I guess just looking for a little direction from the town board uh, is that, uh, you know, we'd even done resolutions previously on that, but um, it, it kind of is a little bit time sensitive. There's a deadline coming up if we move forward with applying under the national program. Uh, are you okay with that general theory? Uh, I'm not looking for you to approve anything specific tonight and then keeping that same rate at $50 an acre like we have used for the other program. Mm -hmm. I'm generally okay with it. Um, I don't. Does anyone else have any thoughts on it? I would. I'd be in favor of it, also. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. That's good enough. That's all I needed. It was just yeah. some general consensus. So okay. And I'm happy to answer any other questions. Otherwise, that's it, Kevin. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, next, uh, supervisor, deputy supervisor, you see the report um, that's attached. I have nothing else to say on that. Um, committees, boards, and commissions, finance. Linda, do you have anything? Nothing. Um, planning. Terry? Uh, yeah, I, I sent a, a recommendation from the Public Works Committee to all of you last week regarding the morale Wilkin property uh, or, or, or application, I should say. Um, I didn't hear anything back, so I, I presumed that there were no questions, but if there are, I'd be happy to answer them. I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. No questions from me. Nope. Um, I don't think anyone else does either. Environmental, Jared? Uh, nothing at this time. Ordinance? Nothing uh, this time, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if we have Chuck Euler on. I don't see him. Um, where am I? Um, Zoning Board of Appeals, I don't see Terrence. Um, Environmental Conservation Board, I see Doug, you're listed as the interim chairman. Uh, nothing really further at this time, Kathy. Uh, let's see, Citizens Implementation Committee. Anyone from there? Parks and Rec, Mark McNeil. Special Events, I don't see Oksana. Agriculture Committee. Okay, I don't see any hands. If I miss you, um, we can come back. And I, uh, Drainage <coughs> Committee, um, um, I don't see Chuck on that either. We have our next privilege of the floor. 
Anyone wishes to be heard? Seeing no hands, we'll move along. Resolutions, we have no continued resolutions, new resolutions. Resolution number 2021-023, acceptance of the monthly financial reports. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-024, acknowledgement and authorization of budget transfers by town manager. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-025, authorization to encumber funds from the 2020 adopted town budget to the 2021 adopted town budget. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-026, endorsing proposed consolidation agreement for the consolidation of certain debt-free water district extensions into the existing Canandaigua Consolidated Water District. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-027, reimbursement for water charges. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-028, secret determination of non-significance and adoption of a text mm -hmm. code amendment to town code chapter 220-21, that would allow amend regulations on swimming pools. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Is that is that right? Would that would allow amend or allow amendment of regulations, or does it not matter? Mm -hmm. does well, not matter. There's a question from Jean on the chat. She must have got onto the mute. Uh oh. Okay. We have to unmute Jean. Jean, what's your question? I, I have a question on a couple uh, resolutions ago, but you finish up this one first, then we can go back to it. Okay, where am I? Um, so I guess- should it, be, should it be that would allow and amend or? Yeah, I was gonna suggest allow and amend because it would actually allow the local law I'm looking at it, it would actually allow it in certain places where it's not currently and amend the regulations. Okay, I think that's just a ministerial change. I don't think we need to vote on changing the title. So as that now reads, um, do we have a motion and a second? I think we did. Yes, you um, do. Any, thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Okay, now, Jean, back to your question. Yeah. Hopefully we it. Yes, question is regarding resolution 2021-026. Um, okay. did, I, did I read a re, um, an email properly that we have to do this 30 days prior to the public hearing? Or am I incorrect? Is that March 15th enough time? Doug, do you know the answer to that question? Let me try to uh, unmute Chris. Uh, Looking for him. There he is. Very impressive catch, Gene. That was scheduled for. This was supposed to be voted on last week, right. which would give us the thirty days. So, yeah, that needs to be April. So, um, if we can go back to that resolution, um, I will. I guess we have to. Do we have to? Um, vote to set aside that previous vote and then amend or I think you could probably just vote to amend the resolution okay we all, we all know what so long as it's unanimous yeah. okay so what would that date be does anyone know offhand April 19th okay so, so Kathy made a motion to amend the previous resolution to read April 19th and I second it okay 
Any discussion on the amendment? No. All in favor? No. Aye. 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 Um, technically, we're voting on the on the resolution, correct? Not just the amendment. Yes. Yeah. Right. Do you have to do a vote on the the amendment and then a motion to adopt it as amended, or no? I think. You could, but I think the vote that they just took approves the resolution reading April. Sounds good to me. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anything before else, Jim? No, that was it. Doug, are you trying to tell something? Yeah, before you do the next resolution, could we just identify the local law number for resolution 28? I think it's number two, but I'm not 100% sure. Thank you. Yep. Okay, I think we're up to resolution number 2021-029, authorization to proceed with mixed use zoning referral to planning board for site plan consideration. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Do we, do we have any more information about uh, these properties? Is there anybody here who is part of that? I'm just curious about the, um, again, I'm curious about the price point. Um, are these units for sale? Are these units, are these rentals? Um, I just, you know, they had a lot of information in there. It seems like they got a little bit ahead of the game. Uh, and I'm just wondering what the, what the end game with this is and uh, the impact of, of spread into that, uh, that open corridor between North Road and 28. Uh, Jared, I'm just opening the web page here now to be able to pull up the site plan. So there's, uh, you know, four townhome buildings um, consisting of 16 units. Let's see, this is the number 28. When will they be at the planning board? Maybe they can answer the questions for Jared at that one. Well, we have to approve it to go to the planning board because it's the MUO. So the uh, petition to rezone, I'm just looking at here real quickly. So it's uh, Bossert and Wallace properties. And actually, I. <clears throat> share my screen here with you so you can see what I'm seeing here. Um, the site plan. Here's the four units here. Uh, two, 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 two. This isn't this isn't the actual rezoning though. Right. This is the referral to the planning board for right. the planning board to grant and review site plan approval at which time after it's okay. site plan approval then it would come back to the town board for the actual right. Reason. Okay. So the developer is going to try to get site plan approval, spend some money to try and get the, the plan together, not and knowing whether he's going to get it rezoned not, or not. Not knowing whether, well, yeah, how it's going to be received. I mean, that's kind of. I'm showing you the statement of intent. We do require that they provide a statement. Right. Of intent. Yeah, I look. I mean, through, I'm just always curious about what they're, what the, what the price points are coming in for a lot of these, these, uh, these, these buildings. Well, we can't really do much about that. No, it's just out of curiosity, and you know, trying to make it so we have these affordable units. But yeah, Terry, since you said it does come back to us, um, I guess we can wait and see what they come back with. And that's a question that can hopefully be teased out at the yeah. board meetings and then that can come back to us. I mean, just speaking personally, I think I'd want to know that I had a lock on pre-zoning before I spent the money. Yeah. But that's their money. So. Yep. So I don't have any further questions. If, if I could though, I just wanna be clear. I, I wanna make sure everybody understands this. So this originally came to you for you to say, yes, it's generally in keeping with the mixed use overlay. 
You said, yes, it is. You referred it to the planning board for an advisory opinion. Advise, the planning board provided you an advisory opinion now that yes, it is in keeping with the mixed use overlay and they provided their specific. And so now you're generally saying here, yes, this project is in keeping with the mixed use overlay, go get site plan approval. I just wanna make sure everybody understands the action that you're taking. Thank you, Doug. Any other discussion? Nope. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-030 <coughs> of Town Clerk 2020 Annual Monthly Receipt Reports and Bank Reconciliations. So move. So move. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-031, acknowledging the Canandaigua Town Court 2020 Annual Report. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-032, setting a public hearing on the draft Middle Cheshire Road and Hospital Services Corner Active Transportation Plan and seeker intent to declare lead agency. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I have a question. Um, this has to be acted on by the end of uh, March in order for the grant to be uh, obligation to be fulfilled, as I understand it. In this plan, there are significant areas that are in the city. And I don't understand how we can adopt the plan. I mean, to me, adapt means at least it infers that it's something that we want to uh, pursue and incorporate in the town. But a big chunk of this is in the city. So when it, my question is, how do we adapt it? I don't think we can adapt it. Maybe we can accept it or acknowledge that it's been completed so that the GTC can release the grant money to us so that we can pay for the, uh, the work that was done by the consultant. Yeah, so if I could, Terry, great, uh, great question. Um, so I had a meeting with uh, Bergman Associates this past Friday and uh, we explored exactly that. I asked that very specific question just so that we make sure that we understand. The town of Canandaigua was the lead sponsor on the grant application. We are the one who is responsible for uh, processing the grant application and is the lead entity. Essentially, the town of Canandaigua has Thank the you, uh, responsibility. However, um, I don't know. I'm going to just meet Chris Nadler because I keep hearing him jumping in there. Um, the um, However, to exactly to your point, Terry, I specifically ask, uh, instead of using the word adopt, can we use the word acknowledge? And they said that, yes, that was absolutely fine. And that the resolution we would just write to acknowledge the report. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'd be more comfortable because again, too, how, how tight are we into the presentation that they gave was great and had a lot of great, and from, you know, there a lot of nice wants in the project, um, yeah. you know, and a lot of things that, that we don't have a price point on those. Uh, what right. will this do? You know, we're not going to be locked into moving forward with something that might come back quite expensive. Yeah, and yeah, I, I think that also, I'm sorry, Terry, I, I asked that same question also because I knew that there were some concerns and even uh, the highway superintendent and I had a chance to talk a little bit about it with some of those things that were presented and there were some concerns about that. And the response that I got was this, this is conceptual and then you would actually need to do a feasibility to study to get into the in-depth analysis relative to cost and everything. And this is just more of a broad concept. Okay. And can you put the link I was, I had a, a couple of requests for a link to the link to the Zoom meeting. I don't have it in front of me. Could you throw that in the chat? 
Uh, let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. If it's put you on the spot, you know. <laughs> it's on the town's YouTube channel, I believe. Can we proceed with this? Um, a vote on this, or you're not ready yet? No, I'm ready. I'm, I'm talking. No, I'm talking about not the presentation, not the the pre the meeting that we have coming up. I'm confused. What? Yeah. Okay. What are you asking for before a vote? No. Okay, you put that. No, I don't need anything else. No, I'm okay. good. I was talking about two different things. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so, any more discussion before we vote on this? No. Okay, so we're just establishing a public hearing by this. We're not adopting or acknowledging, correct? It, correct? Everyone understands. Yeah, correct. That, right? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? No. Resolution carries. Resolution number 2021-033, support for the Cheshire Volunteer Fire Department's application for a grant from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The wolf demo. Second. Any discussion? If they were to get this grant of uh, nearly $300,000, would we be able to take that off the uh, annual? Uh... I like how you think, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> So again, I, I don't know, know that, but my feeling... we have a contract through 2022, so nice try is what I would say. <laughs> but through 2022, but we will remember for 2023. So the the grant would actually be for equipment um, gear that needs to be replaced. That uh, you know what I talked with them about. You know whether it's it's not just fire trucks. It's things like air tanks, turnout gear. It's a whole variety of safety uh, type of pieces of equipment. Um, and then the question is how much, if, if it would be funded. And it's my understanding they're asking for what they think is reasonable, uh, but they may get funded at 50,000. There's no telling. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Just curious. Something to remember when, when <laughs> All right. Any further discussion on that? No. No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution carries, rather. Um, at this time, we have approval of the town board meeting minutes. To move. Second. Second. Any, any deletions, corrections, changes anyone wishes to make? All right, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to approve the minutes um, has passed. Payment of the bills, Jean. All righty, thank you. Um, special abstract dated January 27th, 2021, totaling $70, $70 and that was from the capital projects. Abstract dated February, I don't have the date. Eighth. 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 All right, thank you. Put that in there. 2021 totaling $334,063.80 from the general fund of $87,491.33, highway fund of $103,600.37. Capital projects of $124,934.32 and water districts of $18,037.78. Okay, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion to approve payment of the bills carries. Thank you, Jean. You're welcome. Um, we have a uh, privilege of the floor. Does anyone wish to be heard? Okay, seeing no hands, we'll move on to um, other business. Doug, this looks like it was something. 
Well, it really, we put it <clears throat> at the time at the January meeting, I believe we had talked about the possibility of scheduling something. There was a discussion about that at that meeting. And then um, the question was brought up, do we go ahead at this point and schedule a workshop? So it's, uh, it was a placeholder just in the agenda for you to have a conversation uh, if it's something you want to do or not. I definitely want to, because I don't, you know, I'm people... I can't keep telling people we're going to give them answers and not schedule a workshop. So, um, right. I guess we can we need to have a... do we, when the question is, when do we want to do it after the next town board meeting or we, of course we don't only have to do one, we could do one, um, now to answer some questions and then one again after the next town board meeting. And there's no magic about the next meeting, so we might as well just get it in the schedule. Yeah, I like the idea of multiples as more questions will come up and that will give us more time to have more information and provide some of this information that people have asked for as well. You know, conceptual information, cost information, all those, all those things with, that we can present and share and have that dialogue. So do we need a motion to um, direct Doug to um, set up and schedule a public meeting or, or is it enough that we say it? What do you think, Doug? Um, I guess I would have two questions. Um, it, it would help if you all would set the date or at least give me a couple of days that you're thinking a couple of weeks or whatever. Um, and then really help me understand what is it that you would primarily like to achieve during that meeting? so that I can focus on those specific items. Because there's a lot of comments, obviously, a lot of questions. We've gotten hundreds of emails, literally, that are posted there. So some of them are um, similar or repetitive um, that are they're very similar to the public hearings, uh, some of the comments. So we could certainly focus on some of those larger topics. And then I guess, how far do you wanna go? Like for instance, the, converse, or the comment I know I heard tonight was, you couldn't fit 20 cars in that one property without clear cutting all the trees. That's, I believe that's simply not true, but how how far do you wanna go in showing? Do you want me to hire the town engineer to actually do that? You know, I just need some direction on how far you wanna go. How, how much would it be, or how hard would it be to just have a conceptual mock-up of what it could be, not completely detailed and engineered, but, this is kind of the outlay, the layout, just an overall vision for the property. By the town engineer, you mean? Yeah, because they are the ones who would have to, you know, draw it up knowing what's there. Right. So you... People, go ahead. A lot of people are concerned about traffic safety. Right. So I think you know, those two things. Road um, traffic, uh, you know, what what amenities might be there or or none or any of that information to be included. So I think you're talking about a couple of different things there. So, you know, a real basic sketch, a real basic mock-up, um, you know, it's hard to say exactly, but you'd probably be talking, uh, I would guess, a uh, thousand, maybe even two thousand um, dollars. I, based on some of the bills that I've seen, um, you know, just ballpark telling, talking to you about a, a basic sketch. If you're talking about a traffic study, uh, and then when you get to the full environmental impact statement and those types of things, I think it's going to cost take more time. So the cost is going to be higher. And that's why I was talking about some now and some after the next meeting. So while it's not a magic mm. date, I think we are going to decide more. I think the thought is we'll have more information about whether we're going to proceed. So I think initially, um, maybe just a mock-up um, in terms of uh, what... Would it, Go would ahead. It sense, uh, for the, I think we have finance on Thursday, which we have not yet canceled. Is that right, Doug? Um, would it make sense to kind of create a list of what might we might cover in a working meeting? Yeah, that well, would give we, time to think of a, a game plan. There are a lot of common threads in all the comments we've received. Right. You know, I mean, we've kind of said there's probably half a dozen, a dozen large topics that the people have asked about. 
perhaps if we attack the big ones first and then respond to questions that come in from that or the results of that discussion with people, then have a second one. Maybe have the first one prior to our next meeting and schedule another one after that. I mean, at our next meeting and in, in next town board meeting in March, well, I'm going to say we'll know more, but I don't know if we will or not. I mean, based on some of the comments that were made by, you know, Chris and, you know, the, right. it, it's, it's difficult to really uh, grab a hold of this thing and say specifically, but, you know, having that mock-up, I mean, Doug, you did something for the, um, the uh, RSM property. You superimposed, uh, I think, the parking area from uh, Butler Road Schoolhouse, you know, over you know, where the house is there. I mean, people seem to have the idea that we're going to try and renovate that house, which I really don't think that that's possible. That thing has got a lot of critters living in it now. So, I mean, having like uh, Jared said, you know, some kind of conceptual thing for each of them to show. I mean, we've talked all along about uh, Tishner Point of really not doing a whole lot there. Really just kind of preserving what is there. You know, trying to preserve the nature of, uh, right. of the property, and not and not having a long term vision of making huge changes, but maybe they no. came out over time. But there wasn't, yeah, we didn't have a big discussion about. And I think that would alleviate. I think we owe it to the to the neighbors to put that out there and say, "This is what we see. This is what we see ourselves doing," and it might be very little, uh, just to have that out there to alleviate some concerns. Um, so My concern is, you know, if, if the board decides to go forward to a referendum, then we only have a maximum of 75 days and we have to answer all those questions before it goes to referendum. So we have to get moving, you know, um, even if it we don't ultimately go forward with it, uh, we can't keep saying we're going to answer those questions. I think we're all in agreement with that. I'm, I don't mean to, you know, beat the subject to death, but um so maybe that's a good idea, Linda, is we come to the meeting on Thursday with um, those, the general, the, the broad general ideas for presentation. Um, Doug, I would also ask you if you think it would be helpful to have a committee who's interested in working, you know, we could put together, I certainly can put together a committee that would work on this because there's a tremendous amount of work. We have our Parks and Rec Committee. Um, I don't know if they're interested in, in helping with this. Um, I don't know if there's anybody from Parks and Rec. Um, I see Dave Sauter on the call, so maybe I'll put him on the spot. Um, but, you know, we have a committee that, that you know, uh, that might be able to assist. Yeah, so um, the, the committee, well, I guess the, the committee certainly, I think that there's, um, there, the volunteers of the committee probably would be very interested in working, I'm gonna guess, uh, generally speaking, uh, to help um, provide answers, but I don't think they can do it by the, themselves. They don't have the technical wherewithal and everything. So we have gotta provide the support in one form, one form or another. Um, the other thing I just wanna make sure, if you're talking about a workshop, are you talking about a workshop just for Tishner Point or for both? Because that, that's the other thing that we keep running into. I think it gets confusing. Yeah. I think so, too. We need to separate them. Absolutely separate them, in my opinion. Just Tishner Point right now is the more pressing one. Yeah. Well, the other, one, the other one has the grant associated with it. Are we running into any timeline associated with getting the grant funding? Um, Kevin Olvaney, I think, is might still be here. He could... I talked to him briefly earlier this morning. Let me just see if, up oh, there he is. Kevin is came in and all of a sudden he's dropping in to unmute that man. <laughs> uh, no, there's not an issue in terms of the grant. Uh, we're Relative ready. to what? I put the jacket on, I was ready to roll. I thought, yeah. Um, yeah, we're in good shape, you know, from a grant perspective. We have a good year or so before any decisions would have to be made okay. on that on that property. So, um, and Again, you know, if you need assistance, Doug, you've got some good in-house folks there in terms of helping to draw out a uh, visioning aspect. If you want to go through MRB, that's great. We can provide some assistance to help, you know, if you 
come up with a vision, helping to put that on some of the maps to, to help uh, expedite things as well, if, if need be. Doug, has the county ever done any recent uh, safety studies on uh, th those areas on Westlake? The highway superintendent is still here, so let's ask him. So, <laughs> uh, so Gary, there's been no per se safety studies. The county does do uh, traffic studies maybe every three years of county roads. They have a schedule of where they place the tubes to be uh, counted typically for five days at a time. We could probably ask the county for that information of the last one they did in that area to help give us an indication of traffic. Obviously, the summertime is gonna have greater traffic than the winter time, but um, I'll, I'll reach out to them and see what I can find. Well, that's why I brought it up because a traffic study now is certainly not gonna be anywhere as near what it'll be. And June, July, August in that area. So we could probably get some uh, kickback on that. Right. So I'll, I'll see what the last one was and if it was in this area to give us some data. One of my thoughts relative to the safety thing is that certainly uh, the attention to the safety would be heightened with a park instead of just, you know, neighborhoods. It does feel like Westlake Road has a lot of unsafe conditions on it. But uh, with the park, I would think that the sheriff's people would be around even more um, if there was more traffic due to it. I know, I know we're paying extra for them to be on those roads, so. So um, I, I just want to go back for a second to the committee idea. And I know, Doug, you're saying a committee wouldn't be able to answer the questions, but um, we certainly can put it together a committee that's, that could say, this is, you know, we need an engineer for this question. Um, to I just, I don't want one, any one person to have to answer all of these questions. And I think we probably have people who are willing, who would be willing to um, work to um, find answers to these questions. Um, is that something that would that others think um, would be helpful? Um, I certainly can look into it and see if we can get enough people together to work on it. Doug, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, you know, whatever help we can get. I mean, the, the, the challenge that I'm having right now is I'm also the planner, the HR person, everything else. So any <laughs> type of help I can get, yes. Yeah, I think we're all in the same boat, you know. Um, yeah, I, think I also think that we need to vet through these questions some of them may not be as a priority as others to right. get back to everybody because we'll spend a lot of time trying to answer a lot of questions we should look at i'll say good questions to get good answers yeah so should we use finance as a working start off jump off for this and it looks like on the chat adeline would like to assist and maybe some others from the park committee. But can we agree that we'll try to get one, we'll get one in before the next board meeting, a uh, workshop, yeah. do one before. Is that our concept where we are heading towards a workshop before the next board meeting and then that'll allow us another one after, so we're not. We need to straight. provide some bodies to work on it, I feel like, because I. I I don't feel like we can add it on top of Doug's list and say, get everything done. I agree, but we got to get it done, right? Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, in the meantime, um, we'll see if we can get people that are willing <laughs> to um, assist and uh, we'll start working on it. And I think we should have our meeting on Thursday and maybe um, in the meantime, I'll see if I can get some people together who might be willing to work on this committee. Well, you can feel free to add me to that list. I'd be happy to help out as well. Thank you, Jane. And anybody Great. else that anybody else knows, um, the more the better and, you know, divide and conquer. And again, if we need specialists for a particular area, that's the answer to that question. And we keep moving forward. All right. I think we've addressed that. Um, we have our next privilege of the floor. If anyone wants to be heard. I see a hand up. Uh, I just lost it. Adeline, 
Go ahead. You have to. Hi, I, I just wanted to say as a resident, taxpayer and voter in the town of Canandaigua, I really appreciate how quickly you guys have been able to keep another open meeting where the residents are also able to be interactive in the meeting as well. Um, I know after last week, this was all done very quickly and I'm really impressed and thankful that all of my representatives on the town board and the employees of the town have taken the time to be able to have a safe, responsible, open meeting still given this difficult environment. So I just wanted to say thank you for that and how appreciative I am as a voter that you're keeping these meetings open. Thank you, Adeline. Mr. O'Brien. Whatever you did apparently worked. What's that? To keep these meetings free from uh, intrusions. <laughs> Better knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. Thanks. I don't see any more hands. All right. Um, anyone requesting executive session? Um, okay. Kathy, there is a there is a request. However, it can certainly be delayed. Um, because I think everybody's probably exhausted. So we can uh, take that up uh, another time if you'd like. It's up to you if you, we, we need to address it. No, we can, we can postpone it. Let's postpone it. All right. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Oh, I, I can see that that was on the next page. Sorry, Doug. Um, anyone, a motion to adjourn, please? I'm moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Right. Thanks, Thanks, Kathy. See you on Thursday. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. See you Thursday. Hey there, everyone.